in all that is within me will sing of who you are. Oh, the heavens declare your majesty, the earth and all therein. In all that is within me will sing of who you are. Oh, for the heavens declare your majesty, the earth.
Oh, 
total sedita. <laughs> come see Jesus. Oh, come see Jesus. He's a glorious holy one. The only begotten son. Come see Jesus now. You're the darling of my soul. I worship you. Grazie per ti corrigere. Hallelujah! Oh, mighty God, how excellent is your name, oh God, in all the earth. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all my life, oh God. How excellent is your name in all the world, you're the light of the world. Oh, Lord, you're the city set upon the hill that you've invited us. Lord, to shine long with you. We praise you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Come see Jesus. He's the glorious Holy One. 
The only begotten Son, I see Jesus. Oh, you open up my eyes. You cause my ears to hear. You gave me an understanding heart to know. I see Jesus, my Jesus, e Jesus as he is, for I'll be like him. I'll see Jesus as he is, for I'll be like him I'll see Jesus as he is in all his glory I'll see Jesus I long to see Father, we thank you so much. Listen, you can do one of two things. You can spend your life for him or you can spend your life on foolishness. It really doesn't, there's not, I'm sorry, there's not a middle road. You can let, you can let God raise you up to be greater. You can let Satan lower you to be a fool. I guess that I was going to say raise you up, but he ain't raise you nothing. He's dragging you down. You decide whether you're going to be greater or a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool has said in his heart that God does not see and will not judge me. The fool lives as though there is no God while they supposedly believe in it, believe in him. You know, I was, I was saying to a preacher today, it's just such a sad thing that so many people misunderstand this wonderful life that we have as a new creation in Christ Jesus and this oneness that we've been given in him his righteousness and holiness. And then people will go along and say, yes, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus while they live in sin, and it's such a mockery. The Father has given to us His holiness and in this beautiful place of Him living and dwelling in, uh, in us, living out His life through us, or wants to. The tension is made, okay then, brethren, here's what you do. Cleanse yourself from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfect holiness in the fear of God. And somebody thinks they can make heaven without that. I'm here to tell you, you got yourself another Bible. Because you don't have any other proofs. I got the proofs. You know, I gave myself to the Lord to be an expert in the Word. Not necessarily perfect in the Word, but an expert. There's a big stretch between expert and perfect. But an expert. I give myself to be an expert in knowing the ways of God. And that don't come because I'm basically watching t television and talking to the friends. That comes because we're communing with Him, hearing what He says in His words, searching it out. I mean, I tell you, can you fix this? I spent, you know, just, just to let you know, I mean, I spent hours yesterday just on one word in the Bible trying to understand what the one word means. And, and I don't believe that I don't believe that it takes anything less. So many people have distilled their ideas of who God is. They have created for themselves who God is. And God wants to reveal to you who He really is. <laughs> we start off forming ideas about God, and God forms our ideas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We well, can be seated. <laughs> I'll be dancing around over here. Uh, crying out, screaming out, freaking everybody out. So I'm just waiting for you just to grow up. I'm going to tell you right now, the passionate people have all the fun. Let me just tell you again, the passionate people know how, how to have all the fun. I mean, that's especially true in God. The people that are quiet and reserved, you don't know how to have fun, man. You don't know how to, you don't know how to mix it up with heaven. You know, it's just even in the world, the passionate people have all the fun. Everybody else says, you know, they're, you know, wet blankets. <laughs> but out here in this wonderful realm called the kingdom of God, the passionate people know how to touch that place because it's passion that touches that realm. 
And we're always trying to get people out of whatever there is, whatever it is that they're into. I promise you, God does not dwell in a place of silence. He may speak with a still, small voice, but not all the time. I know there was one time that, you know, he, there was a, there was an, there was an earthquake, but he was not in the earthquake. There was a great wind, but he was not in the wind. There was a great fire, but it wasn't in the fire. He was in a still, small voice, but not all the time, because sometimes his voice just sounds like <laughs> thunder and, and like the blasting of trumpets and like the sound of many waters. <laughs> so, you know, listen, I'm telling you, everything I see about the throne is just beautiful. It's glorious. It's passionate. You know, I've, got, I've been able to see pictures of, of what the throne room looks like, just studying the Word of God. But, you know, I've been so also privileged to see in dreams what it looks like. What happens to you people, somebody says, well, when I have myself a dream, when you get hungry enough, because what the Lord does is he sees it just so hungry, just so thirsty. Oh, Lord, I want to see. I want to behold. I want to look at this. And then he, and, and, and he sees us in his word and crying out to him, and he, and he gives us a glimpse. He gives us a glimpse. And then he does things in our lives. He'll do things in your life that you won't be able to tell anybody about because it's just too sacred. You know, I, I just I want to remind everybody tonight before I get in to things too deeply. You know, so many times I talk to people about their health. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you can stand in front or over top of your scale that you weigh yourself on, and you can rebuke it in Jesus' name all you want. You can command it to change the numbers to be reduced all you want. But nothing's going to happen until you engage. Are you listening to me? Somebody said, oh, it's painful. Yeah, you're looking at some painful right here. Are you listening to me? It, it's kind of, it's tough to get out there and and get cardiovascular exercise. Listen, if you're overweight, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not healthy at the best. You're, and, 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 and I'm going to tell you something else. You probably got a diseased state going on in your body. You know, I rebuke people all the time about it, screaming, hollering. You know, so many times people look at me like they insulted. You better listen up. Better listen up. Over and again, you know, I, I'll walk people through stuff and then they give no response. You have an excuse. There is no excuse. You know what? A long time ago, I read this prayer that, that uh, Jew, Jewish people pray every day. And they pray over the major systems of their body every day. It's part of their ritual. You know, I'm like, man, do I do that? You know, I kind of like in a general prayer. So I started getting into this, you know. I mean, they pray on how things come in, how things go out, and how things are in the between. Are you listening? <laughs> Making sure all the pipes are working. And are you listening? All the metabolism is functioning properly. And then we give ourselves, we think about this, we give ourselves to living in divine health. That is not an accident. Amen. I mean, if you act like a fool, you may need a fool's rod. You know, it's just all there is to it. If you act like a donkey or a mule, you may need a mule's bridle. But I'm going to tell you right now, there, you don't have to have either one of those. You can set yourself on divine health. Listen, we live in an age and a time right now where we have the most poisonous foods in our in our you know, within our marketplace probably ever in the history of man, probably better to eat less food in many respects. And if you just come along with me fast, your stomach could get smaller. You won't need to go in the hospital and get them to give you a small stomach. I know people went and got a small stomach and then they blew the thing back up again. <laughs> and they went and got all their fat removed and then they're back where they were. Because it's something not on the outside, it's on the inside. Somebody said, oh, it's genetics. Hey, listen, my mom was overweight, my dad was overweight, but I'm not overweight. And I don't care what your genetics are. There ain't nobody in some concentration camp somewhere that's all overweight. And there doesn't exist. And in fact, in, in most third world countries, it's, it's rare. It's a rarity. It's like you can stop and look. It's like a zoo freak. Yeah. Are you with a, <laughs> a carnival freak. So I'm, get yourself. Get yourself. You take care of your body. Why don't you just come agree with me for divine health? You don't have to get sick. You don't have to be sick. Amen. Amen. If you get sick, you can press through. There's times where, you know, there's been situations where we've had to wrestle things that got on us. You know, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, you know, all through all of this, listen, you want to learn how to receive. When the preacher tells you, smile, smile, because that's teaching you how to receive. When the preacher says to you, repeat after me, repeat after the preacher, because he's teaching you how to receive. If you don't do that, you're not going to, there's a cure there, but you're not going to receive it. The cure is there, but you can't have it. 
God's no respecter of persons. Those people who press in for the things that he has for them, they will have them. They will receive them. Amen. And I, I, just, I just, I hope that you'll hear me. I hope you'll listen to me. I hope that you'll say, look, you know what? You know, you're going to, I know it's, I know it's real satisfying for some of you to sit down at the table and overeat. Stop it. I know it's not so satisfying for some of you to go run 15 miles. Start it. Because you won't get a mile down the road and you'll be collapsing. You'll be praying, you know, oh, Lord, I'm having a heart attack. Help me right now. But you won't be. You won't be. You'll see you. You'll see you. Get you. Come on, people. Come. Understand divine health isn't something that you sit around declaring you have, thanking God for. Meanwhile, while you do all kinds of things that violate health, you can't do that. So I pray in Jesus' name, everybody get yourself on the straight and narrow when it comes to walking out this life in which God can be glorified in your bodies. And, um, you know, I, I think more about it all the time. Now I'm getting ready to turn 65 years old. I'm conditioning myself for it. For me, it's truly just a number. If I shaved off my beard, you wouldn't see any gray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now that is maybe some genetics there, but nonetheless. <laughs> Come on, people, you don't, listen, you don't have to live your life in any other way than what is described in the Word of God, glorious, hallelujah, whoo, <laughs> just in every way, an example in, the, in, in spirit and in body of everything that looks like the blessing of God, spiritually, uh, physically, financially, material, materially, they walk in your, if you had dirt floors, people walk in your house on a dirt floor, and that's the shiniest dirt floor they ever saw. That's such a clean dirt floor, you could eat off of it. I mean, everything you have, you take excellent care of it, and especially his temple. Yes. Hallelujah. And what happens, you start treating his temple uh, as it should be treated, as, as that which is holy, instead of a junkyard, are you listening to me, a place for, you know, demons and, and, and all kinds of, you know, bats and owls to hang out in, okay? Sin and iniquity. You start treating God's house pure and holy, and you have keep a right heart and an attitude in your heart. You keep it, you keep it right before God and before men. You don't speak evil with your tongue. You're going to get sick and, and diseased, you do. God says so. And God will not be mocked. You sow the flesh, you're going to eat corruption. God says so. Period. Whether it's in this life or the life to come, you're going to reap it. Somebody said, I'm healthy. I've been drinking all my life. I have a fifth of what, scotch every day. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I mean, they're going to work out for you in the life to come. You may be thinking you're healthy right now, but you're not going to be. One second after you're de dead, you're going, be, you're going to be drowning in a place called the lake of fire. There are hundreds of millions, if not billions of people right now under the wrath of God. Well, you're talking about the grace of God. The experience of the wrath of God in a place called hell. And you can say it's not so, but I would tell you right now, Jesus talked more about hell than he talked about heaven. He's true. He's not a liar. You can thank Buddha to get you there, but he, he, he's not there. Well, oh, he'll get you to hell because that's where he's at. You can think of all these other religions and all these other ideas within the framework of whatever demonic spirit you're communing with. Ain't going to change anything about the reality that there's only one who came and took our place and took our sin, who died for us and rose again so that we could have the proofs that we no longer are bound by sin and bound by darkness, but are people who belong to the kingdom of God, citizens of heaven. And nobody can do that except Jesus. And nobody can constantly give the calling card. I mean, in so many places, especially in third world countries or even here in this nation where people don't know much about God, especially if they've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire or they've not sit under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and listen to God but do not obey. You have a different responsibility. I'm going to tell you right now, people, you want to try to put everybody in one category. There's not just one category. There's people who've never heard. There's people who have heard but have never understood this wonderful power gifted to us by God. Then there are people who have under, who've come to know and sit under and, and be a part of this wonderful power that is entrusted to us by God called, called the baptism and the Holy Ghost and fire, but do not obey. And then there's people who are set apart who have been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire and live it out and walk it out and, and search it out. And there are different results for every different category. And it's easiest to get these people over here in this category who've never heard, don't know anything about it, to get them healed. Great miracles and signs and wonders. God's there with his mercy. 
And these people that are over here in this category knew nothing about the power of God. They just knew about Jesus. Nobody talked about the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? <laughs> they liked those folks, those disciples that the Apostle Paul met in uh, Ephesus. He talks about Acts 19. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. They, they failed to understand this wonderful privilege, this wonderful glorious event that we've been entrusted with and given privilege to participate with that Jesus talked about when he said, it's expedient for me, for you rather, that I go away because when I go away, the Holy Spirit's going to come. That's, that's what keeps me thin with application. That's what keeps me healthy from the crown of my head to so is my feet. All the pipes working properly. Amen. The breathing pipes, the digestive pipes, amen, the blood vessels, amen, hallelujah, the heart, the kidneys, the liver, come on, uh -huh. the spleen, the pancreas, all the gallbladder, everything. Somebody said, oh, I think you got a gallbladder problem. Somebody was trying to look at me, trying to, yeah, I said, look, I'm got a gallbladder problem. You got a problem. Mine's healthy. I'm going to pray for it right now. Just make sure. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. Then I go look up every healthy, healthy thing for the gallbladder. <laughs> Just to poke the devil in his eye. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I just pray that everybody in this place would take God serious. Take his word serious. Quit trying to get out of your responsibility to God. <laughs> you have a responsibility to him. He gave you this life. You in this amazing life. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> People that don't know life, they got to basically try to kill every brain cell in their, body, in their head so they don't have to think about it. They drink alcohol, smoke dope, do all kinds of crazy things, try to get off in some la-la land with demon spirits because they know nothing about this extraordinary life. And tonight we want to invite you in to this. I want to invite you in to all of you guys looking all, you know, satisfied. You need to not look so satisfied. You need to look hungry while you're the champion of the world. You're, you understand me? And you get passionate. Uh, there, hunger, hunger has a passion to it. Yes. Are you listening to yes. me? I don't care if you're gone for 20 days without food. If there's bread, you're in the fight. Are you with me? You, you're in the fight. You'll find some energy. You might have been crawling up. <laughs> you might have been crawling on the ground like a slithering snake. But as soon as you see the bread line, suddenly, oh, shit. You got a jolt of energy, and you got in the scrap for that piece of bread. People, the Lord fills every person who's hungry. <laughs> That's why <laughs> I get so filled every time I come to the meeting. There's something special about the church meeting. Praise God for the personal relationship that we have, but something special about this place where we get to gather together in His name. He's standing here in our midst. He gives special gifts, special acts of grace. And if you'll just reach in with greater thirsting, greater hunger, greater passion, God will give you greater faith to touch the realm that is, all, that is always available. And, and I, I just pray that, I pray that you'll start cooperating with God. If you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire in this place tonight, we want to see that happen in your life. There's an evidence with it. Well, you know what? There is an evidence as to whether or not you continue in it. And, and I, I don't want to approach any condemnation, but some of you are a little bit coming up a little bit short on the evidence that you're continuing in it. And I just want to encourage you, read your Bible. And don't read your Bible with your special glasses. These are my glasses to make God's Word conform to my lifestyle so I feel better about me. Read God's Word uninhibitedly. Just read what it is. I mean, last night the Lord just was shorting me out, you know, from Psalms 15 because I'm, I'm translating the Psalms and and I have been for a while because I want to put it in with the New Testament translation. And, you know, Psalms 15 and Psalms 24. I mean, you're going to go to church right there, people. You're going to go to church and have a prayer meeting of, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, forgive me. And help me never do that again by the time you finish Psalms 15 and Psalms 24. But what happens is every time we read the Word of God, well, there's, some, there's something happening within our lives. There should be a response within our lives. It's a hunger to do it His way, a hunger to have the things that He's made available to us. And then with that hunger, we get here in this place where this, 
For the Spirit of the Lord now has made available every gifting that there is in the life of Jesus. And some of you, if you're not careful, you'll become religious and you'll go through the motions and you'll sing the songs and you'll pray the prayers, but you'll never receive that which God wants to supply out of an intimate relationship with him and an expectation that he's going to do what he says in the Word. If you don't believe God's going to do it, if this just a book you read over and over again, feel sad because you're not that. That's religion. Relationships, you read what the Lord has to say, and you're like, oh, Lord, I want that in my life. Oh, God, I can't live without that. Please. I'll do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, I'll do whatever it takes. And it doesn't take long, people. Things change in your life. Amen. You have the, you on the ongoing proofs. You know, there are so many things going on in the world right now, especially within the Christian community of everybody propagating and declaring their truth. It's not God's truth, their truth. And the reality of it is, in the context of truth, the Lord says, you shall know them by their fruits. People ask me all the time, well, help me understand fruits. Well, I'm going to tell you, in John chapter, uh, forgive me, Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 20, there's a very specific declaration of truth and, and fruits. And the Lord said, you know, some, know them by the fruits. And then he points out that there's a lot of people saying, God's really my Lord. But, and they're doing all kinds of seeming miracles, but it's just sorcery. I said it's sorcery. It's a familiar spirit. It's sorcery. It's Satan's lying signs and wonders. There's a real miracles. There's real signs and wonders that comes right out of holiness. Signs and wonders and miracles are expression of holiness. Because that's the expression of who he is. It's an expression of him. A place where, you know, when, you know, the seraphim seeing the holiness of God, they are ecstatics. Ooh, you talk about, they are the most ex radical ex examples of ecstatics that there are. The more you live in purity and obedience to God and faithfulness to God and willingness to be truthful with God, the more you're going to be able to receive from Him and see Him and know Him, and the more you're going to become an ecstatic. You're not going to be some religious dud sitting around thinking about what sin or iniquity you can go invol get involved in, why Satan blinds you to the reality that you're on your way to an eternity without God that you cannot afford. God doesn't want anyone to perish. He knows how bad it is. It has no reprieve. It's forever and ever, and the pain never ceases. That's just reality. So I said, oh, I don't believe a loving God would do that. Yeah, a loving God is going to do that. He's going to make sure there's no sin in his universe. And for some of you rebels, the only way that you're not going to be committing re rebellious acts of violation against God and his creation is to be in pain. That's it. And by the way, God in all of his wisdom knows. And he created his hell for the devil and his angels, not for men. I don't believe for one moment, and nobody ever going to be able to convince me from the Scripture, I've searched it, searched it out, that God planned for Adam to fall. Not one verse of Scripture suggests that God planned Adam's fall. Not one. He planned a success. But he gave us a will. You know, be always talking about, oh, I need to die to myself. No, it's deny yourself. And can I tell you what yourself is? It's your will. You want know to tell you what the pride of life is? You exalting your will above God's will. And you're just another devil. If you do, you're just another devil. You're no different from Lucifer. You're no different from any angel that fell with him and rebelled against God with him. You're no different from any demon who kills, steals, and destroys men. You're no different. It's true. All the time, people are missing out on something that's the most glorious, wonderful celebration that's going on in heaven. And Father wants every one of us to get into it. So, and enjoy it and be a part of it so the world can see the light shining. And at least if they're going to reject God, they get a full expression of what they're rejecting. Joy unspeakable, full of glory, peace that passes, understanding, power and authority over sickness and disease. You know, Sunday night, there's so much power God in this place Sunday night. It took me a long time time after having left to just basically come down to a realm where my eyes could close because <laughs> that quickening glory of his divine power in his presence does that mean everybody's going to receive no it doesn't that mean people people sitting around with jesus saying he's a devil people in all different kinds of states based upon the state of their heart based upon the meditations of their heart based upon the the things that Satan has claims on them because of sin. 
You sin, Satan's got a claim on you. Tonight we want to make sure that claim's broken off of you. There's only one power to break, break off the claim of sin upon your life. That is the blood of Jesus. No amount of good works can compensate for the sin you committed already. None. None. It was the most violent act of treason. It was the most violent act of, 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 of murderous act, hostile act against God that could ever be imagined. The smallest act of disobedience. True. It's just people don't understand it because they're so deep in the stuff. they so up to their eyebrows in it. It's normal to them. No, no, it's not normal to me. It comes with a big old package of grief and hurt and heartache. I want nothing to do with it. I hate Satan. I hate his sin. I hate his sickness. I hate his disease. I hate everything about him. And not one thing about Satan that I like. Much less love. Much less having a hard time imagining how am I going to live without that demon. How am I going to live without that particular lifestyle, that particular sin, that particular thing that I call good for me, which is nothing more than a deception from hell, a lying spirit that once broken, and you come into your right mind, you say, how could have I ever been so blind? How could I have ever allowed such things in my life to think such way? You know, tonight, I, I want to spend some time with you. So, uh, in short... Sit up straight and get it right. Come on, stop messing around. Are you listening to me? Get busy. Do what's right. Take care of your body. Take care of your things of your spirit. Cleanse yourself from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfect holiness in the fear of God. Amen. Amen. Understand that God is to be glorified in your body and your spirit, which are His. Make sure that you understand if you give yourself over to any kind of sin or any kind of iniquity, God will not be mocked. You will, you will reap what you sow. But just rather... Come over here into this wonderful, joyful, hallelujah, fellowship of being able to offer your body a living sacrifice. <laughs> Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable worship. Let the fire come on you every day. <laughs> Let rivers of Okada Maste Pratada. Somebody said to me, preacher said to me the other day, well, not too long ago, he said, well, you know, it's just, it's just really hard to walk out this life in the spirit. I said, yeah, when you empty on the inside, but when you filled up, it's easy. You just aren't getting baptized enough. And somebody asked me not too long ago, they said, well, what's the difference between being baptized and filled? Not a lot. There's not a lot. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it tonight so you can understand maybe a, <laughs> a little bit more about this sweet partnership and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, I, just, I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is first and foremost a person. He's not a thing. He's not an it. He's a person. Oh, hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost, him, the person can't jump on the inside of you. And he can't be divided up into, I don't know how many people are full of the Holy Ghost on the earth right now. Let's just say there's, let's just say there's 100,000. Somebody said, oh, there's close to a billion. <clears throat> okay, well, oh. Well, I, let's go with a million, just to compromise. That there's a million people in the earth baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire right now. I mean, you contrast to compare that to 120 on the day of Pentecost and what they did. I, you know, it's just kind of, it's a scra head scratcher. So we're just going to leave that, okay? But he can't be up in 100,000 different bodies. He can't divide himself up into a million different persons to be in them. So he gives us his Holy Spirit. And he gives, and you know, um, there are certain things we can say about how this operates, God. And, and I know that, that in some respects you can distill it out from Scripture. But I think it's just a waste of your time to hear it and try to explain it. If you're not willing to just do it and receive it. You don't, know how, you don't need to know how he does it. People say, well, how does he do it? It doesn't matter how he does it. Are you doing it? Are you letting him do it? Because he will do it. I believe that I know. I believe the Word of God has shown me. But it isn't I mean, a big point to me. The big point is that God has given us a co-partnership, a co-participation with Him, a co-witness with Him. 
So the Holy Spirit comes and baptizes us and comes upon us, as it were, the outside. And the re instantaneous result on the inside is that we filled up. And we so filled up with the Holy Spirit that it comes gushing out of us like rivers because it's far more than we can contain. He does it here in partnership as our parakalaitos, as the one who is our leader, our guide, our teacher who walks alongside of us. That, that there is nothing that goes on unless it is by him first affecting it in our life. And, and the Holy Spirit, you can see the work at the, on the day of Pentecost. Suddenly there came clo a rushing mighty wind, clothed in tongues of fire, came rest upon each one of them. And we know what happened. God, the Holy Ghost, came. God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ because of what Jesus did for us at the cross and at the resurrection and the ascension sent the Holy Spirit to pour out the Holy Spirit upon all flesh, sent the person of the Holy Spirit to administer, to oversee the outpouring of the Spirit upon all humanity, whosoever wills. And we see what happened. They baptized, and immediately they began to do something from the inside, out of their belly. Out of their belly, they began to do it as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. The person who now is connected with us through a wonderful miracle of union. 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 I'm captivated by this oneness and by this union. I want to know more about this oneness and by this, by this union. And I've discovered that I can only know so much as so much as, as I'm willing to obey God. Wherever I limit God, that's it. Wherever I stop, where I say, Father, this is as far as I'm going to go. I'm going no further. I'm busy with this thing. I'm busy with that thing. I've got these ideas and that idea. i got fish to fry. I know you're a hard person reaping where you have not sown. Gathering where you did not lay up. I'm busy. No, he is one as one who went on a far journey. As a king who went on a far journey and left all that he, he had to us. And that's his signs, his wonders, his miracles, his light, his glory, especially his fellowship with the Father. I'm going to tell you right now, only the passionate people are having all the fun. Amen. Some of you need to learn how to dance. You need to learn how to just move just a little bit to start with. <laughs> Some of you are stiffer than ten men. I'm telling you right now, but I got the oil tonight. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. God outside. I need to just walk around with the oil can. <laughs> uh, well, the Holy Spirit is. He's walking around with the, Holy, the oil can. You know, the reality of it is, as we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11, that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every person so that we may be brought together. And that is the Holy Spirit himself who divides individually to each person according to his will. And he wills. And you can't sit there and say, yeah, I'm just waiting on God. No, you're not. You know, because he's willed to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, and you can start operating in these things right now. He's there willing, as soon as you begin to step out, as soon as you're willing to be obedient, as soon as you find yourself some boldness and confidence in God, instead of waiting around for God to hit you with a lightning bolt that's never going to come. So uncertain, so Thomas-like. Are you with me? Yes. All of a sudden, you say, look, you know what? I'm going to tell you right now, if, if some of you made the same kind of excuses for yourself in the natural that you make for yourself in the spiritual, you'd be out there in a gutter somewhere or living under, you know, a cardboard, uh, in a cardboard box. It's true. You got up, grabbed hold of yourself, got bold, did the things that you needed to do, go and get it done. Are you listening to me? You fought through hell, high water, and every other thing opposing you. Mud, snow, rain, sleet, hell, all kinds of stuff to get what it was you needed for the now. But yet, come to the spiritual things, you're just waiting on God. It don't work that way, people. The, the things that begin to happen is you, you, start hap you start understanding that which Father has, a, has assigned us to do, equipped us to do. And then you get out of your fearful state. You get out of your intimidated state. You get out of your self-conscious state. You get out of your condemnation state. All this weighty stuff that if you're not careful, you're going to be being involved with it more than what you realize because you function in your jobs after the thinking of men, people. You do. 
you all you all up to your eyebrows in, in, in the thinking of men. And now you're going to try to find a switch to make a shift. No, you better be careful here. You better keep your heart with all diligence so it doesn't cloud the real issues of this fellowship and how you're supposed to be properly thinking after this boldness of the Holy Ghost. You can, I don't care what state you're in, you can grab a hold of a prayer life and say, oh God, stretch forth your hand and grant that there should be signs and wonders by your holy child, Jesus. Look at how on the outside he's coming. He's at work uh, alongside of us. Christ Jesus seated in heaven said he's going to be with us even under the end of the world. Goes everywhere working with them, con uh, confirming the word with signs following. Are you listening to me? The person action of Almighty God outside of us but there's a co-witness and a co-partnership because he does nothing in the earth lest he does it through us or someone someone what if everybody was a bunch of duds and nobody will allow the Holy Ghost there's nobody passionate we just all sit around like a bunch of monks Buddhist monks going boom, 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 boom. He'd have nobody in the earth showing heaven. That's like another dimension of hell. That's like the first, that's the first gate of hell. It's demon power. Somebody said, you should be making fun of, listen, making fun of who? I'm making fun of Satan right now. I'm making fun of this stupid stuff. I'm making fun of a demon spirit. Are you listening to me? I'm not making fun of a person. They're just blinded by their darkness. Huh? Somebody's going to have to get up and start shouting. Somebody's going to have to get up and start get bold about God. I'm going to give them praise. No rock's going to outdo me. And it's a wonderful thing. I'm going to tell you right now, when you know that the Holy Spirit is going, from, going to do something through you, he's going to allow the very rivers that flow from the throne of God to flow out of the throne of God right into you and then out of you into the world. But he can't do much while you've got your mouth shut. Why are you like... Trying to, you know, what were we singing tonight? That was beautiful. It's a new song, eh? That was beautiful. I'm going to dance, dance, dance. I'll dance, I'll dance, I'll dance. <laughs> dance. <laughs> so out of shape, you have a heart attack if you start doing that. <laughs> Lord Jesus, thank you for healing everybody in this place. <laughs> Some of you, I've told you a couple of, Years ago, get that fat off of you, and I can still see it. Some of us, I've been trying. You've been trying hard enough. If that's how hard you try in the Spirit, no wonder the gifts of the Spirit are latent. They shouldn't be. They should be forceful coming out of you with expressions that are so glorious and, glorious and divine. Listen, I, I've, I've had so many different questions thrown at me over the years. I mean, one of them is, why is it that some people, they only operate in one gift of the Spirit when there's so many available? Listen, I'm, tell you, I'm going to tell you what. It's so that you're willing to give yourself to and fight for and labor in and endure through all the persecution and all the hindrances and all the things that say you can't do it. I mean, if you're not laying your hands on people that are sick for them to be healed, you're never going to develop in the gifts of healing. You're not going to do it. If you just like, if you draw back as somebody, you know, got, they got a flu and you're not good at flus, but you're good at migraines, all you're going to ever have is migraines. You need to go for everything. I mean, just go after it. And when, it, when people don't get healed, you don't just let it be water off a duck's back, so to speak. Don't take a responsibility. You go home, you pray, you cry out to God, Father, show me. The Lord has shown me so many different things about what goes on in people's spirit life spiritually of why they can't receive. And that's why you hear me hollering and shouting a lot. You don't mess with that table. You'll get sick and die. It's big to me. I'm not just handing out communion to anybody. I'm saying, you know what you're doing here? You know, you could be eating and drinking damnation to your soul right now. Because God said so. You, there are conditions with everything that goes on in God. Are you watching what you have to say, that the accusations or things that are coming out of your mouth? Do you know who stands in the holy place? Do you know who gets to, to touch this realm of divine glory? Those who walk blameless, who work righteousness in the heart. Psalms 15. You couple that with Psalms 24, man, I'm going to tell you right now, you'll be crying out to God, oh, Lord, <laughs> I'm in need of your help because if I'm left to myself, I'm going to mess this whole thing up. You know, we come to the meeting and praise God, you're coming to the meeting and you need to be in more meetings. Holy Ghost meetings, not flaky meetings. There's so much flakehood out there. There's so many people basically talking, 
you know, a lot of stuff about the supernatural and living in sin and iniquity. You better watch out what, what table you're sitting at. You better watch out what hands are being laid on you. You, don't have, you got enough troubles as it is. Let somebody impart their lust spirits into you. Or you got to go home and deal with their demons. I mean, over and over again, people, I'm going to tell you right now, I've spent a lot. I've spent 42 years doing this. I was raised in a house of the move of God where the Holy Ghost was all about the service, every service we were ever in. Demons going out, sick people being healed, disease going, yeah, every miracle, everything going on in the Scripture. And I recognize early on in ministry that de demons will try to follow you home. And you better know how to deal with it. And I've never understood how, you know, why sometimes I've had to wrestle with them like I've had to wrestle with them in the night, having cast them out of people. I mean, you, it, but the bottom line of it is we win all the time because we fight from this place of, of victory. The battle's already won. You know, if we were fighting from the place of, uh-oh, we don't know who's winning this one. That'd be scary. That'd be scary. I've had some crazy things happen to me. I was in Japan on the 46th floor of a hotel, 46th, 47th floor of the hotel, highest top of the floor, top of the, top of the hotel. And I have somebody knocking on my window outside. And then they came inside. And I'm like trying to wake in up going, whoa, 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 wake up. Because I was, I was, it, was, it was the worst, most terrifying fear I've ever experienced. I've been in some pretty radical situations in my life. It was the most terrifying fear I've ever experienced. You know, I... God had given me in a, a place and a position to start shouting to the nation of Japan. And we were in meetings every night in two, three different places, Tokyo, Osaka, and Okinawa. And we were up against some serious stuff. We, <laughs> we kicked the devil out everywhere. We, we kicked him in the teeth everywhere we found him. We, he, we, he went home whining to, the de to Satan <laughs> everywhere we found him. And I'm telling you right now, the enemy comes out with the repercussion. But he can't, he can't win ever. He can fight. We wrestle with this stuff, but he doesn't win. Because uh, greater is he that is in us than everything. He's greater than everything. <laughs> More than all that is in the world. He's greater than everything. Hallelujah. Get passionate. See, I'm going to tell you right now, somebody's still sitting there right now. Don't do that. Folks said to me over to get, you know, you would have a bigger church if you didn't insult people. Well, I don't know how to do not do that. You need to be insulted. I want to get my point across. I'm not a politician. There's nothing political about me. I'm bringing it. And you're going to have to be confident in Christ Jesus. <laughs> you're going to have to be built up in the faith. You're going to have to be hungry and thirsty for change be around here. Come on. <laughs> no, because look, I'm just not going to play patty cake. Let's pretend. Act like you don't notice. Now get with the program in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. There will be one thing for sure. Somebody might be insulted. Someone may be embarrassed. Someone not, may not like me anymore. But they'll know exactly what I was thinking. And I promise you, I've dedicated myself to giving myself to exactly what God is thinking. I promise you, I spent time in prayer. Lord, let me say not one single thing that you're not saying. Let me do not one single thing that you're not doing. Let me declare your word just like you intended for it to be heard. It is the greatest passion of my life. I don't care where the chips fall. And we want them to fall on you in a right way. And the response be, God, have your way. And that's going to be a, a denial of your will every day. So I just want to define self for you real quick. Because yourself got in the way of the Holy Ghost. Yourself can deny the Holy Spirit. Which is, I can't believe that God did it that way. I've asked him, please, you know, take my will from me. And he says, no, I'm doing it. Not forever. You got it. Now you submit it to me. You worship me with it. I'm going to let you do that with your will. So he said, well, I, I'm going to die to myself. And one day I'll be dead. You're never going to die in the way of being dead. You're going to have your will forever. Amen. And as long as we in this body, till we put on mortality, we're going to be tempted. We're going to have to deal with Satan's insistent temptation, intense. Are you listening to me? And, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's crazy what we have to get up, go up against sometimes. But we fortify them in the Word of God. We have fortified them in the Spirit of God, and we win every time. Because we deny ungodliness. 
and we deny worldly lust. How can we do that? We receive the power of God. I got the power of God up here. I'm doing it by the same way he's doing it. Huh? But the grace of God, which is divine power, has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness, to deny, not allow it. Are you with me? Worldly lust, because they're going to keep coming at you. You're going to deny it. Not to die to it. Deny it. Are you with me? The Lord didn't say die to yourself. He said deny it. Are you listening to me? So I like to, but look, uh, semantics is important because the Word of God produces faith. If I think I'm going to die to it, I don't have the power to die to it. Are you listening to me? I have the power by the Word of God to deny it, so I've got a solid ground to stand on. I'm denying that. I'm denying anything that would have or be, be of my will that would be different from Father's will. I'm going to take my will. I'm going to submit it to his will. Hallelujah. That means so I'm going to take myself. I'm going to submit it to his self. Because I could do nothing of myself. Son defined. Listen to me. Are you a son? Let me define a son for you then. A son in chapter, John chapter 5 verse 19. The son can of himself do nothing. That's Jesus. That's sonship. And we're following him. So, you know, tonight and, and, and tomorrow, if the Lord allows me tomorrow night, I'd just like to maybe just flesh out for you. Maybe you can hear a little bit better this partnership with the Holy Spirit. So you can recognize it more. You can recognize that he's right here with us. He, he, you know, he hasn't basically, you know, done a drive-by and went back to heaven. Are you there? <laughs> he's right here. <laughs> right here, right now. And, and, oh, and, and in being with me, he's also in me. And I live out a relationship with him that is a divine union. So nothing happens in me. That he's not actuating outside of. And at the very moment of the new birth, he gave me the capacity to have all of his fullness. <laughs> That's a really good starting place. Eh? <laughs> I mean, you're like getting first string, you're number one on the team when you showed up and you're just nothing. You're nobody. You're number one. And then he gives you the capacity to be all this, to grow up into it, to develop in this. He gives to us at the new birth. As many as would receive him. He gave them to the authority to be sons. You know, when I just stop right there and I say, wait a minute. Look, I'm not, I, don't, I don't believe in this, this information reading. I, 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 that's probably why, you know, I, I spent so much time in school. I, studying in school. I don't believe in information reading. It's like, what is that? How does that work? You know, five hours later, I'm still on the one point. And I haven't even gotten done the chapter. How does that work? Huh? What, authority to be sons? Time out. What does that look like? What am I supposed to be doing now if I receive that? What kind of place? What kind of position? What kind of power? What kind of responsibility? Now I'm going to step up in my responsibility. I hate being late. I hate being late. I'm going to step up into my responsibility. I'm going to sit around and say, yeah, I'm doing it high five. When there's nothing going on, I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to high five you. I haven't done it yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. But how many, how many years are you going to take to figure this out? That as many as receive him, he gave them authority to be sons. What does that look like? I have authority to do nothing on myself, to see Father, see him do it, and walk out boldly this confidence of, of power over every unclean spirit, this power and this authority over sickness and disease. Hallelujah. I'm not going back out of it to see the lost change, to see nations won. To see things done and advanced in the kingdoms. And so just take some time. List out on your piece of paper. And you're going to cut, you're gonna need a little book. All the things that God describes concerning the authority of a son. And then ask yourself, do I have that? Well, then am I doing that? Do I have the fruits of it? What do I have the fruits of? If somebody was going to describe me, describe something about me that I'm good at, what that, would that be? Would that be anything that has to do with Jesus? Or would that be something to do with men and the things that men do? Watch out. Coming at you like a freight train right now. Are you listening? Truth's coming at you like a freight train. <laughs> Just lift your hands and worship. You know, come on. You done God? That's it. That's it. Come on. Just lift your hands and worship. Look, it takes boldness. I'm going to tell you right now, God gets excited about boldness. He gets excited about faith. 
where people are stepping out and it looks like everything around them going to kill them and you still walking right like there's nothing, like you're going to a picnic. He's like, woo! There's somebody who believes. There's so many folks that are held back because of their own intimidation, their own fear, their own self-consciousness, their own reason. Oh, I don't know what to do. You know what we call that? Paralysis <laughs> by analysis. Would you please quit thinking it out and start obeying because you a slave, a servant, and we're not looking for original ideas here, <laughs> says the Lord. He's given to us this privilege to be seated with him in a heavenly realm to execute all of his ideas. And his ideas so outdo our ideas is far beyond anything that we can think or ask. His thoughts are far beyond our thoughts. Amen. Okay, to parane. What he wants to, to develop us in. Whoo, my, 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 my. You know, Britt was just here. God, he, Britt was just crying out, God, use me more. And just being willing to do some of the most radical and intense things. And then he did, goes, grabs a hold of Nicaragua, Nicaragua and says, Lord, I need 10 million. Take this nation, basically. Something to that effect. I mean, just where God will take you. Take you from, from one, one place in, in dimensions of faith and the, and the power demonstration that's in his life to another dimension of, of faith and the power demonstration in his life but some, some people they want it they got these ideas about where they're supposed to start you supposed to start right where you at getting all excited about jesus and then immediately in that excitement with jesus we know it's not religion when it's relationship it's relationship when you go do what he is he's doing if you don't go do what he's doing you in religion you're just religious you just kind of do your religious thing some people do it a little bit more excited than others they never do what he said to do Power of God comes upon them. I've seen power of God come on people a lot, of, a lot of different times. I've seen power. Once again, Sunday night here, the power of God was is as intense as any time I've ever experienced the power of God. There's going to be people who are going to receive. There's people who are, going to be not, who are not going to receive. There's people who are going to benefit. There's people who are not going to benefit. There's people who are going to ultimately receive this wonderful grace of God. They're going to do something with it. There's a lot of people going to receive this wonderful grace of God. They're going to do nothing with it. They're just going to come back for another Spirit size. This is the presence of God. You're going to feel good. You should feel good. I know that what I'm doing looks like a mockery. It's intended to be. You know, I want to mock you. I'm not going to ever mock God. I'll only mock you if you're mocking God. You know, because I'm not going to stand by. I won't stand by and watch my master messed with by religion. I would soon stand by and watch somebody slap my wife around. And I promise you, I will have the same anointing that David had. <laughs> if that happened, I would lay hold on an Old Testament divine power of God. <laughs> but I promise you at the same time, I'm passionate about him. The, the zeal of the Lord, Jesus said the zeal of the Lord has consumed me. Are you listening to me? I'm, not, I'm done standing around watching people mock him, mock his presence. Huh? Declare all these things and not have the fruits or the evidence for them. I mean, come on, people. At least just get moving. Get moving. I mean, there's some people out there, Baptist people out there, have never been baptized in the Holy Ghost in, in fire, and they got more evidence than a lot of Pentecostals. At least they're running with a testimony, you know, knocking on doors saying, do you know who Jesus is and do you know how urgent it is about, how urgent it is for you to know him, to have a proper response to him? And they're not even baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Imagine what happened to those Baptists get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. I hope they wouldn't get Pentecostal laziness. Oh, that was one amen, one hum. <laughs> There's a Pentecostal laziness, you know. Well, we've arrived. We're there. We got the new creation. <laughs> no. Praise God for the new creation. Praise God that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Praise God that he has given to us his righteousness and holiness. Praise God that he has given to us his fullness. Of his fullness have all we received. Praise God that now with this fullness we can be responsible with it and come to know what is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth, to know this love of Christ. Because that's what it's about. It, so he's given us the capacity, but what are you going to do with the capacity? Sit around in your living room? No, you're going to have to be willing to give yourself to prayer, 
to understanding what God has willed, both through prayer and through His Word, and worship, and then obey. Because as soon as you do, it might be a little bit afraid, especially if you go out there and you've got machine guns waiting for you. I mean, people, are, people in America, they can't even get over whatever it is going on in their life, their own self-interest, holding on to their own life, to go down to, to say something to someone standing in the, you know, in the line of the, at the cash register. No wonder they can't go to the foreign field where there's a little bit of a threat that you might die. Are you hearing me? The only reason that we go easy right now in Kashmir is because I'm not ready for anybody to get kicked out, but I'm getting organized. We're getting organized. We get pe if people don't get kicked out, we're still going to be wide, running wide open. We're getting organized. Hallelujah. <laughs> we're going to have a, or we got an organization being built to where it's never going to get kicked out. And then we're going to have these peripheral people that get kicked, are going to be, you know, in jeopardy of getting kicked out. But they're not associated with us. But they are associated with us. Governmentally, they're not associated with us. Are you with me? <laughs> Because that's the only, that's the only concern, man. We're going to move with, we're moving with the wind. I'm not afraid of the Taliban. I'm not afraid of ISIS likes group. I know what they're going to do when they get around me. I'm gonna, I learned a long time ago how it works in the Middle East. He who screams loudest with the greatest intensity and boldness wins the fight. I'm telling you, Middle East people highly respect someone who does not flinch and gets up in your face. Spit and everything. <laughs> True. I've been there. I've done it. I've, I've lived it. So I'm in. And when the Holy Ghost, when you know how to let the Holy Ghost run through your life, I mean, you can out yell the best of them. You can out spit the best of them. You get closer to anybody else than anyone else can get closer to you. Are you with me? It's just true. Come on, people. And, and Father, whatever you are, whatever is needed, Father will equip you for it. Right here, Southern California issues. I haven't completely figured out this species yet, but nonetheless, we're getting at it. We're getting an insight from heaven on how to properly deal with this particular species of human beings, cultural species of Southern Californians. But the Lord's going to show us. We're going to get it. Amen. He's going to help us. You know, I'm going to tell you some of the greatest testimonies that I've heard of concerning the overwhelming convictions of the Holy Ghost, which has an impact on every culture, no matter what culture that is. Some of the greatest experiences I personally had where the Holy Ghost conviction is so intense is when people are passionately, radically caught up in the realm of the Holy Ghost that doesn't come because you were sitting in a meeting for five hours. You were there for several days. And everybody else went home that wasn't really in. And then something happened. And that was the beginning of a move of God. It's the whole history of the church testifies to this. Because the Lord's going to sort it out. I mean, I, I heard it over and again. Turn me out just a little bit. I heard it over and again and saw it in, in the older men of God and the revivals that just have been in the past century. Of where those meetings went every night. They were in the morning. They were at noon. They were at night. They went on for 12, 18 weeks, sometimes longer than that. And it, it wasn't people just having a meeting. It was pressing in. It was reaching into God. It was crying out. It was people laid out on the ground crying out. It was people preaching. It was people worshiping. It was people praying. It was just a passion to say, I'm moving past where I'm at. I'm taking, packing all my stuff up, and I'm moving into heaven. It was a moving into heaven meetings. Oh, God, search me. Shine the floodlight of heaven upon me. Let everything about my life be conformed unto you. I've got to have everything that you have for me right now. And then leaving out of those meetings and going and changing regions of, of, of the United States of America, nations of the world. There's nothing different about God. It's just something different about people. You know, and I'm just so blessed that every one of you that are here tonight, that you're here there's something going on between you and God. Hopefully, you're not just here because, you know, there's some kind of idea. You know, you're still basically shaping God in your own image. Because that's where it starts off. Your relationship with God is what you think God is. As you grow, God shows you who he is, and now he changes the way you think about him. He alters the whole thing. So don't write too many books yet. 
Amen. Hallelujah. If it didn't come out of fasting and praying, crying out to God and saying, God, I don't care what it takes. I'm going to obey you. Then don't do it. Amen. And so tonight I'm asking you, do that now. Have that consecration. Have that kind of surrender. Because if you don't, then there's a, there's a question about holiness. Because holiness is a state of being consecrated to his will and his purpose. There's a question about righteousness. Because righteousness is at walking out those behaviors of God, those purposes of God in obedience to God. And I pray tonight that every one of you will say, everything that I read in the Word, I'm going to do. I'm not going to let up. I'm going to understand the 30,000 foot view, and that's a very, very important. You know, if you're lost in the woods, people, now we've got drones. You send a drone up and triangulate. You're there. You know exactly where you're at. Are you with me? We get lost in the words of idea, uh, in the woods of ideas. We get lost in the woods of words. We get lost in the woods of concepts. And we think that because we know something about God, or maybe know something more about God, that we have arrived, or that we make it a goal as though that's the finish line. No, it's not. That's the starting line. You're in the blocks. Now, what are you going to do with it? You're in the blocks. What are you going to do with it? I mean, if we just, if we take ourselves, just we take ourselves, and, and I do this, and I, and I pray that you would do it with me because it, it produces within our lives the right response. And we say, Lord, if we were what you had to work with on the day of Pentecost, would have the gospel ever gotten <laughs> off the ground? If we were it, if we were the ones there on, <laughs> on that day <laughs> 2,000 years ago, how fast would this have grown? It, within 30 years, they turned the world upside down. Within, within 100 years, it had, it, the gospel had gone pretty much to all of that known part of the world. And, and, and you know, the Middle East and, and Asia Minor. And then we, we just have to look and we say, well, Holy Spirit, you've not changed. The gospel's not changed. Jesus, you've not changed. So something's about something's wrong with us. And I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's your culture. Your culture has choked the word so it cannot bring forth fruit. Cares this life, deceitfulness of riches, pleasures of this world. You gotta decide when is it that when is that day you're gonna go tend your garden? When are you gonna go deal with your issues? When are you gonna go recognize, say, Lord, let the floodlight of heaven shine upon my soul so I can identify cares this life, deceitfulness of riches? pleasure of this world because yeah, I'm telling you right now that's wrong that's sin it's just sin and you got all these things pulling on you some of you get you some of you watch out you know because you could actually be in, in like in a in a mini job experience mini job okay it's smaller than mini mouse mini job experience <laughs> and you could be letting all kinds of things pull on you and it's being de demonstrated towards heaven that you really are caught up in this world. And it's not about just you and the Father. It's about you and the Father along with all the stuff that he's given you. And all the advice and all the counsel and all the ideas around you. So let's just, let's just make sure that we're clean with God. That there's nothing else going on that's going to hinder this fellowship. This, look, I'm yours, Lord. And really, it's not that hard. It's just constantly keeping yourself before the Lord. I'm yours, Lord. And doing. Obeying God. Moving in the direction that God has given you. I mean, how many souls have you brought into the kingdom that lasts? Because he wants to give you fruit that remains. Amen. You have to deal with that. Yes. You have to say, okay, Lord, what is it about me? Because obviously I'm eclipsing you. When people see me, they see me. They don't see you. So what is it? So what, is, what are we going to do here? What does it take for me to move into a realm of your divine power and your glory so that when I can go and I interface with the lost, they are overwhelmed by your presence. You've got to deal with that. And nobody can deal with that. Listen, we, listen, we lay hands on people, I, I, you know, all over the world, here and all over the world. And usually when I lay hands on someone personally, I'm literally surging with the fire in the presence of God. What they receive from heaven has nothing really to do with me. It has to do between them and the Lord. All I'm doing is what God has commissioned me to do, be a helper of their faith, Come with this authority and this power that God has given. Now, they have to respond. A person, you have to respond. We all have to respond. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. I, if I could just touch them to where you receive. There is, a, there is, there is that 
that place of submission, surrender, hunger, belief, faith in what only Jesus can do there that now receives, lays hold on what only Christ Jesus has, and it flows into you for whatever the need is. Yes. This is the way it works, people. You want relationship to develop, not religion. Yes. Religion will make you fruitless. Religion will make you powerless. Religion will make you a talking head. Another talking head. Just a moving head. You know, can you, I, just, I wish I could make it as ob obnoxious looking as what I can picture in my mind. Just a talking head. No, Father wants us to be completely hid away in this wonderful ministry of union with Him. We're just His glory, His power, His presence. Where we get up and we motivated with His boldness, His certainty. We know what's going to happen as soon as we step into that place and we begin to tell someone about who Jesus is and how much He loves them and their urgent need to have Him in their life. For there's no religion in it. There's no spiel in it. There's no salesman nothing in it. You don't, you don't. You don't have that because you can't, because you, you're wanting, you, you're, you're willing. You have that because you've received something from heaven. You were willing and you received something from heaven. And you don't have this perplexed kind of, you know, weird look on your face. There's a glory glow. Amen. There's something about you that's different. Huh? We're not interfacing with AI. Are you with me? Watch out, we're in a, listen, we're in a crisis storm right now, people. You don't understand that. But right now, we are in a shift in the way that culture works, the way the world works, the way that people interact with each other, the way the, the whole of society functions. It's AI moment. Everything changes now. You know, you don't get it. I'm talking to a bunch of people who've not had a cell phone yet. It's 1970. You're going to have a cell phone. You're not, you're not going to dial up anymore on this phone. You're going to carry it with you, and it's going to fit in your back pocket. People in the 70s will be looking at me just like you're looking at me right now. <laughs> then you're going to have laptop computers that can do more than a whole, you know, uh, 20,000 square foot building filled with computers can do. And, and you're going to be able to take it, and you're going to be able to carry it, you know, in your hand, in your backpack. And it's only going to weigh about five to ten pounds. Two to three now. We get into iPad stuff and wear smartphones. Are you with me? 70s. You're giving me that 70s look over these things. See, this guy's way off in the future. No, and it's here. It's already here. It's going to change everything. And you know, you and I need to be way out, in front of, way out in front of it. And it's not because we got something smarter and better and slicker. It's because we've got a, the power of the Holy Ghost at work in our life. What does it take to see the move of God begin to literally just multiply exponentially through your life? You're going to have to be willing to be obedient to God and in total abandonment to Him. You're going to have to be willing to come to a place that He describes in His Word that I'm not going to go through right now. I've gone through it so many times. You've got to be willing to meet the conditions of this union. You have to be willing to take what he's given you and, and run with it and understand properly how to run with it. And I pray that you'll, you know, you just say, okay, Lord, I'm in. I'll do that. I know you're here with me. I know that you're working with me, that I can de depend upon you, that it's not really anything that I have. It's everything that you have. And now I'm coming to believe everything that you have is available to me. And so that when I step out in obedience to you, you're going to do the works. You're going to confirm your word with signs following. Holy Spirit, you're going to bring heaven to the person that I'm talking to. I don't need to bring heaven to them. But I've got to be filled with heaven for heaven to come to them. Because I don't believe one for one moment that the Holy Spirit is going to do anything in a person's life that you and I are not in union with him to do. There's not going to be any God manifestation coming through our lives, except for we're in union with the one who's doing it. If we just think, well, we got this, well, let me think. Hey, I'm a great thinker here. I'll think for a minute. Stand back, everybody. I'm thinking. <laughs> There's nothing going to happen. Supernatural. <laughs> There's nothing going to happen. It's like where I turn, I turn to Father, and I don't rely. There's no self-reliance on me in me in any way. You with me? I never stop and try to think it through. I immediately turn to God. What should I do? Now, because I've got this communion and this relationship with going on with him. Think about this. 
I said it the other day. Just imagine that you were allowed to hang out with the Father all day. He said, come on into my house. Come on into my room. Come on into the Holies of Holies. You know, I've got a lot of things going on. You know, I'm doing, doing the universe today, okay? <laughs> but I want you to just hang out with me. And you're just, you'd, just be so, you'd just be so happy just staring at him. Are you with me? Just in awe of this majesty, this electrifying glory and presence, this, this, this presence that produced all life. But he's done even something even greater than that. He's moved into our life, but wants us to have the same response to that as though he invited us into the holies of holies to be with him all day, every day. A communion, a fellowship of oneness that is just, it's really, it's more radical than can ever be described. You only get it when you start obeying, and where you obey is exactly what Jesus did. You've got to be willing to go to take up a cross to go to the lost. You take up a cross to go to the lost. Hey, baby, it's not about you. Are you with me? Yes. Honey buns. <laughs> Sir, mister, buddy boy, whatever. It's not about us. It's about him. Yes. I'm going to take up my cross. I'm going to lay down my life. I'm going to leave everything. Do you know how hard it was for the fishermen to leave their boat? That's generational, man. You've lived in this, you live in the same house your dad lived in, your grandfather, your great grandfather, your great great grandfather, your great 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 grandfather, all the way back. You've just been in that same house. And that boat's been around for a, whole, a long time. That's ancient wood on that boat. And the Lord says, guys, leave it. And the scripture says, and they forsook their father, Zechariah. They, just, they left him, and they followed Jesus. I, you know, I, I'm going to tell you, the Lord has shown me that people are not even willing to do that with their jobs. Yes, they're not. They want to parse out their life. Oh, this is my business, and this is my walk with God. So one guy said, you know, oh, oh who's, who was pointing out to him, you know, you're lying when you're, when you're selling that product. Oh, yeah, but that's just business. No, that's just you, and you're on your way to hell, sir. Oh, you're judging me. No, God judged you. God said, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Res without respect to persons. So don't put it on me. I'm just declaring to you what he said. Are you with me? That's not judging. That's declaring his judgments. If I didn't declare his judgments, then I'd be a charlatan. I'd be a false prophet. I'd be a person who would be worthy of damnation, telling my own story, speaking my own words. I, I just want you, to, I want you to move into a place a fellowship with the Lord to where that you recognize there's only one son and there's only one model son and he's not going to fit your life. He's giving you an opportunity to fit into his life. He's not going to conform to you. I don't care how much you make it up, how much you want God to look like you. He's not going to look like you. Praise God forevermore. Or me or anyone else. He's given us the opportunity to look like him. Hallelujah. I just want to make sure that you understand. Look, I know it's a little bit confusing. It's hard to get it to separate out religion from relationship. I know. Satan is a master of deception. The only way you do is you start obeying on the raw, simplest level. Some of you need to get a breakthrough. Some of you really, the best thing you could possibly do is go to the mission field for two years. To leave everything, go to the mission field for two years. Just total abandonment. Somebody said, what about my bills? Sell what you have. Pay off your bills. Put some money in the bank so you have something when you come back. If you come back. Because you may not come back. You find out that obedience is amazing. The growth curve went from like barely measurable any increase to like zoop, right through the roof. 
And you might even be praying less. And you might even be reading the Bible less. But you're talking to people and reaching to people and, and going out and seeking those who are lost. He came to seek and to save those who are lost. You become more reliant upon the Holy Spirit, more dependent upon Him. You're not going to step in to God's windfall of wealth until you're willing to leave all yours behind, get rid of it, and now move into a faith realm where you're trusting Him every day for every bite of food, for every drop of water, for everything that you have. And it's good if you can bear it in your youth. Some people just basically have prolonged it out, way out. How long are you going to put it way out there? What do you want on that day? What do you expect to have on that day? Because God has a requirement for every one of us. He loves us all. I'm not going to say there's a break point as to whether or not you're, you're, you walk in just, you know, open disobedience before God versus a grace that I can't really describe to you that doesn't demand, as it were, full obedience, if you can get what I'm saying. Theologically, you'd probably not get what I'm saying, but you want to get what I'm saying because some of you need it. A lot of God's people right now that are in church, they need a gospel that gets them into heaven without full obedience to God. Because full obedience to God is radical. You can't, you can't change the word. You can't change the life of Jesus. Are you listening to me? <laughs> the life of the disciples. Come on. You can't change what is given to us as a model and adapt it to some kind of culture and life of the, in this world. And, and, but I, I can say this to you in your jobs and the place that you're at. Make sure that God, it doesn't matter. I mean, I put up all kinds of stuff all over in my cubicle. I mean, um, Brad, what's his name, was there. Brad. And I had, if, what should a prophet of man if he gains the whole world, loses his own soul? I mean, I, I just, you know, I wore, I wore T-shirts with big, huge letters. You know, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you. There's no other way to be cleansed. He would say, you can't do that. I'm doing it. I'm here, for the, I'm here for Jesus in, in, and to take every part of our life in every area of our business and say, no, I'm going to preach Jesus. I'm going to preach Jesus in a way where I've got fruit because if I don't have fruit, I'm not preaching Jesus. There's something that needs to be changed. Well, it's not going to take you 10 years to find out what needs to be changed. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's right here. And he's right here. He and the Holy Spirit has brought Christ Jesus, and he's brought the Father, and he's brought a privilege for you and I to be put on the Lord Jesus Christ, to be clothed with Christ Jesus, to walk in this mutual fellowship of intimacy where he's in me and I'm in him. All these things are ours. The mind of Christ is right here. It isn't something aloof. What are you doing with your evenings? So you're at work. How many hours? If you, if you work at 10 hours, get to 8. Okay, so let's go to work from, let's just, come on, let's, let's get our job in here because everybody's making an excuse because we got to keep you coming back with your wallet. Okay, so, I, um, you hear me. Okay, but bottom line of it is, so you're at work eight hours. What you doing with the other 16? Where's the street corner? Where's knocking on doors? Because you carry within your, not, not some Jehovah's Witness legalistic thing, you carry in your heart a burning fire from off the altar of God. Something's happened to you. You begin to move in obedience to God in, obe in, a, in a willingness to move with the Holy Ghost. And there's a passion to see people's lives touched, delivered out of the jaws of hell. So you can't just tell me, you know, well, we got this excuse. I got a pass from the Lord Jesus. He said I didn't have to obey him and follow him, lay down my life, be persecuted for his name's sake. He said if you leave what you have for my name's sake and for the kingdom, then this is what you're going to get. People want to go ahead and say, well, I lay claims to what he said is, is, as it were, the reward, his promise of provision, without ever obeying the things with abandonment of our will. If we're, if we're moving towards an absolute abandonment of our will, which is what everybody's talking about when we're, you know, talk, talking about growth and maturity, 
maturing in holiness, maturing in righteousness, maturing in the gifts of the Spirit, if we really are moving in that place of an abandonment of our will, <laughs> people, that happens as a function of obedience, exact obedience from the exact knowledge which is right there staring us in the face. Everybody's really quiet. Well, should I go back to the passion message? <laughs> Everybody who's passionate is having fun. Are you thinking? No, no. If you're thinking, stop thinking. You've been in your problem all your life. It's a disease. It's re start responding. Yes. God has a thought for us. It's called the mind of Christ. Yes. It's the mind of the Spirit. It, it's, it's, it's just saying, yes, Lord, yes. with an abandonment. I'm going to do this. I watch some of you guys, man. It's just like, where does the compassion move in? Where does the fellowship move in? It's like, listen, introvertedness, let me just tell you something. That is a state of fear. You're in bondage to fear. When you are just tr have trepidation about going and saying hello to somebody, I just don't know what to do. It. <laughs> and you're lined up against the wall while everybody else is basically socializing. You're back up here in the corner. I just don't know if I can do it. I just don't know if I can do it. You're in bondage to fear. You move into the Holy Ghost, love overwhelms you. You're getting ready to go try to, you, we're going to have to hold you back from kissing everybody. This, the new, just hug them, man. Hold up. Fear, bondage of fear. Some of these things are so painfully obvious that it's such a prison that people have locked themselves into and justified their state as okay. It's not okay. If your spirit looks different from the Holy Spirit, I question the union. If your behavior and your mannerism looks different from what Jesus is doing in the room, I question your union. And you should too. And all you've got to do is have the proper response. Not no condemnation, it's a proper response. I just want to break you out of deception. Amen. Proper response, Holy Ghost, take over me and move into this realm where you say, look, some people it's just real easy. It's real easy for Allie. Hey, she just, that's who she is. Huh? And I'm not going to point out who it's really hard for in this place. <laughs> Most of us know it. Are you with me? We'll just leave it. The bottom line of it is giving who we are over to the Holy Spirit and letting him live his life through us. He's with us. I can talk to him, Holy Spirit. You know how stupid I am. How I'm so full of self-consciousness. I'm just like this little frightened child over in the corner. I don't know how, you know, to go and reach out to people and love people. Because I'm certainly not going to ever put anybody in the category that you're just arrogant. And you think you're too good for everybody. I'm never going to put anybody in that category. Because I would have run them off a long time ago. It's just about letting the Holy Spirit take over. It's just the fundamentals of love. People, it starts there. It's the fruit of love. His love. There's such a freedom here where there is no more self-consciousness. It's just all about what Father wants to do, and he's living his life through me, and that's not religious or pretend. It's an action and a behavior, and I pray that you'll get to enjoy it because I'm telling you, this is where the life begins. And it is rare in the church of Jesus Christ. You have to be in the middle of a full-blown revival. It's not so rare in third world countries amongst God's people. Because it's just different. Many of them, because they live in a kingdom world. They live in just a kingdom concept of things. They're not all independent, all, you know, Germanically separated in a warlike section of their own territory, ready to take up arms at any moment. I hope that you can hear what I'm saying. I hope that you, after such a long time as this, I hope you can hear what I'm saying. You're going to be you. You are going to act like you until you let the Holy Spirit baptize you. When he does, he will fill you. He will fill you fundamentally with the fruit of his behavior and demeanor of love. And when you are filled with his love, you have no self-consciousness of yourself, not another moment. 
That's your battle to fight. You're hanging on to yourself. You're going to have to understand how to quit living out your own life and start living his life. And it's not religious people. It's not an ideology. It's an interaction of divine relationship where you and I touch heaven, heaven touches us, and we begin to have a flowing forth of his life. It may start only as a wellspring because that's where the Lord said it. You know, put it with a woman at the well as a wellspring. But I really believe that God would put everybody right into the category of having rivers of his presence. And so don't tell me you got rivers of his presence when you don't have his love demonstrated through your life. His caring, his abandonment of care and concern and compassion where it's all about other people's needs and how you can, be, you know, how you can help them. That's his love. He's not imprisoned over in some isolated place, leaning up against the wall, watching the parade go by. Are you with me? Yes. I ho am I making sense? Yes. Somebody said, well, what do I do, Pastor? I'm, I'm, one of the, I'm that person. I'm stuck. I know it. You know it. And half the people in here know it about you, them, those folks. I love you, but you're an introvert. You're imprisoned in your own life, and you're reproducing after your own kind. You say, Pastor, what do I do? You hit the deck till something happens. You get on the floor, and you over there crying out to God, don't be silent. Don't act like you're sleeping. Huh? Are you listening to me? And, and then take that, when it hits you, take that and go out to your house. And, and, and go into your closet and cry out to God or wherever it is and cry all the way on the, in the, air, in the air, airplane, in the car. <laughs> and then do walks around your neighborhood. Oh, God. Oh, God. I've never knocked on that door because I'm just afraid. I'm just afraid. I, I, I'm, I, I'm so caught up in me. I want to be caught up. Just start doing this. Start getting real with God. He'll get real with you. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah, man, I've been waiting for this. Start confessing your sin. Say, Lord, I've had so much self-reliance. I don't rely on you. I rely on myself. I don't immediately go to you and ask you what I should do. I try to think it through and come up with my own solutions. Because I promise you, both go together. They walk hand in hand. It's just true. Today, I'm inviting you to a new beginning. I'm inviting you to a new world in Christ Jesus. And it's freedom, people. In his glory. <laughs> and it's his life abundant. <laughs> ah, you're going to go <laughs> running and, and leaping and praising God. I mean, I promise you, let heaven come touch you. Let baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire be what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a baptism, a greater baptism into union. The new birth is a miracle of holy union with God. As a new creation, he puts his spirit on the inside of us. A holy union that, that communion speaks of where he dwells in us and we dwell in him by his spirit that he's given into us. Baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. God the Holy Ghost comes, uh, surrounds us, immerses us. It's upon us. It's all around us. The result of that is God himself is now seen in the midst of the holies of holy. He's now seen in the midst of the sanctuary of our life. We interact with him. We rely upon him. We say, oh God, touch me. Fill me with your love right now. And he does. I'm going to tell you right now, usually, I'm going to tell you honestly, usually in my life experience, and which I can also show in the scripture, is when you begin to move out and represent Jesus Christ to someone, Power of God hits you right there. And it may be a wall of all kinds of lying, demonic influence trying to keep you from going to that person, doing that which God has assigned us to do. But if you move past it and you come with his word, not how do you, th what about the weather and how are the Padres doing and, you know, and the Chargers, man, I tell you, we need another football team, by the way. There's nothing going to happen there. When you take it upon your heart to again begin to start praying for people, laying hands on people, Amen. wanting to get right in the middle of it. You know, I, I, was, I was looking at Gaston the other day, and he's rich, just came right out, wanted to get in the big middle of it. And, 
And I wanted to be in the big middle of it. You know why? Because I know that when you get in the big middle of it, something starts happening. Yeah. A surge of the Holy Ghost comes. And now, if you are already very outgoing, now you are outgoing on Holy Ghost power. <laughs> are you with me? Ah, if you are already just generous and gregorious, my goodness, Father is now just taking it to a supernatural level. It's just what, that's what happens. You don't have to be hanging back, being a spectator. You're not going to get anything there. You're not going to feel anything there. You're, you're, the, the Holy Spirit has no co, you know, co, cooperation there. There is no co-witness going on. There's no co-heirship, co-inheritance taking place. Think about all the co's that should be going on here in this communion. So, when does it begin? When does it begin in your life? When? When? When does it begin? When does it begin? You could say now, but it's necessarily going to be now. There, there's going to have to be something more. You have to ask yourself, how many times did you say now? I just want to back in a corner. How many times did you say now and you didn't do it? Or maybe you didn't understand. I want to make sure everybody understands. Listen, we're here to love you. We love you. We're here to help you. And we're never going to leave you. My telephone number is available to everybody in here. And if it wasn't because of some obnoxious people out there, I would say it right now over the Internet. But I, I mean, I'll, I'll minister to the obnoxious people out there. But there are folks who call you up and they have no desire to hear anything. They just want to talk nonsense. They want to talk trash. Let, let, me, let, me, let me give you something that I, I, want, I want you to believe right now. Would you, would you be willing to believe what I'm going to tell you? God is longing, desperately longing. To bring an overwhelming glory of heaven and of his presence into your life that's there all of the time. Amen. And that has for its moments of great display the coming together in this place we called the assembly of his saints, his holy ones. In the midst of that, people, I'm going to want you to understand there's joy unspeakable, there's peace that passes, understanding. There is a love that goes beyond any description that is human because you are so connected in a Holy Ghost union where God is at work on you and through you. You don't want anything less. Anything less, I will say, unequivocally, is a dimension of religion. Is some dimension of religion. It's a claim to power that you have no dis dis demonstration of. And I'm going to tell you right now, I put the demonstration of his love above everything else because he does. Not a kind of sort of love, not a like. His love that is completely all-consuming with total abandonment to the Father's will and has no concern or thought of self-interest or self-reliance. And you want that because there's nothing more beautiful. I can't tell you anything more beautiful about heaven, about who he is. Love defines it. Love defines his holiness. We're talking about being baptized in His holiness. The fundamental chief de description of being baptized in His holiness, people, is baptized in His love. And we got to get rid of this mess that's making you barren and unfruitful. There's a slow growth curve that is happening nowhere else. I mean, God wants to multiply what's going on in this place. He wants to multiply what's going on in your life when it's His life. He does not want to multiply what's in your life if it's not His life. He does not want to multiply that. He will not multiply that. It will be on hold. God's moving right now. You don't have to live as you've been, but there is going to be a responsibility. Once again, you can get on the scale and you can scream and holler at that number all you want. You can command it to lower. It's not. And it's just a good example of all the rest of the spiritual growth and spiritual change and spiritual dimension. You're going to have to do something about that, and it's going to hurt. And it's going to be uncomfortable. And it's going to be change. It's going to be lifestyle changes. Because it's not, you're not going to run for like one week. And now, okay, well, you know, now you're going to take the next two months off. I just heard about a 72-year-old guy. And I'm not sure exactly how old he was. But it was recently. 72-year-old guy 
that did, I believe it was 10 marathons, one after another, each month. And it was walk, run, but come on. And he's shaking it up in the kingdom of God, too. He's shaking it up. He's shaking it up in missions. He's shaking it up in the things of the Spirit. There's a, there's a connection there, people. You with me? I'm not saying you do no marathon. You with me? I'm not. I'm just talking about this whole dimension of saying, I know if I'm going to have these results spiritually, this union display of God's presence in my life, then there is going to have to be changes in my life of behavior and the way I cooperate with them because it's a cooperation. It's a co-participation. It's a co-testifying. In other words, his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons. Sons defined by the son does nothing of himself, does not rely on himself, doesn't look to himself, doesn't have a display of his own personal experience seeing what God's doing. We get to see what God's doing first and foremost from his word. Are you going to do it with him? Or are you just going to be an intellectual? I'm a teacher. I can tell you everything about God and everything he expects you to do. But you've never done anything yourself? You're not a teacher. You're not. You're a false witness because you're not doing it. Period. Just to, this is the way it is. We don't need people. We don't need intellect. We need Holy Ghost. We need obedience, a demonstration of the Spirit and power. We don't need the wisdom which men has to give concerning who God is and what God wants. We want that which only God the Holy Spirit can give and describe and display and empower us to do. By baptism of the Spirit, we're filled with the Spirit to the point that the rivers of God flow out of us. Measure it. They're making me put a meter on one of our reservoirs. It's not a reservoir, praise God. There's water flowing in and water flowing out. You know, a pond is ultimately going to go belly up and everything's going to die. Are you a pond or are you a reservoir or a lake? Well, you're supposed to be rivers. Huh? But they're going to make me put a, a meter on so that I can, they, they can monitor what's coming in and what's going out. You know, it'd be good for you to set up a meter. What's coming in? And what's going out? Oh, I got all this stuff coming in. Then you must be really blowing up over here. If nothing's coming out on the other side. Where is the evidence that something's coming in? I just want to break this down for you people because we get honest with God, he's going to get honest with us. We get truthful with God, he's going to get truthful with us. We draw near to him, he's going to draw near to us. We, get, we come and approach him, he's going to come and approach us. It's not going to be in no make-believe scenario. It's going to be in truth. And I'm, I'm not going to get all condemned. Well, you know, nothing's coming out, so I'm just going to give up. You know, just get a, you know, brand me with an L. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> no, that, 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 this is the ministry of righteousness. It's a call. It's saying, wait a minute. You've got so much more than what you've been willing to realize. You've, you've, got, you, you, you've got so much more than what you've been willing to receive. And all of this is just simply in, found within the framework of simple obedience to God. I heard, a, I heard a great man of God preach a sermon on faithfulness without obedience. It's a radical sermon. I was a young man when I first heard the sermon. So many people be faithful. They'll be faithful to come to the prayer meeting. They'll be faithful to come to the church meeting. They'll be faithful for this and faithful for that. But they never are obedient to God. It's about men. It's about their concepts of social community, faithfulness to social community rather than obedience to God. Because God may assign you to go out and you won't have anybody, you won't have any friends, you'll be all alone. You'll be on assignment where there's nobody who knows anything. God say, now you're going to change everything. It was just such a blessing to have Britt here because he's a testimony of that. He was sent out and it was a fearful, you should read his book, it's a great book, it's, it's called Apprehended. And he was sent out to go do a work. And there was nobody there, and he didn't know where to go. And he just drived and drove for 10 plus hours, just looking. Father led him to a place, and there was no Christians there. And now it's a great work. After many years, he birthed something through obedience. Out of that, you inherit things, people. You develop in this place of abandonment of will that you can't get anywhere else. 
you develop this place of yieldedness to the Holy Spirit that you're not going to get anywhere else. You develop in this place of maturity and growth that you're not going to get anywhere else. And I promise you, there's 197 individual little nations right here in this county. There's 197 individual zip codes. And, if, and as far as I know, no one has ever taken that up. It's, listen, the back in the 80s, I went I spent a lot of time on the downtown streets of San Diego dealing with the homeless all over this county. And it was just a time sink. And then the Lord showed me exactly what needed to be done. They're homeless because they got unforgiveness and bitterness in their heart towards their family, somebody in their life, and the only true repentance is that they're going to make it right and go home. And they're not willing to do that because I spent a lot of time doing that. At, and I'm just saying, it's not, it's a, I'm not saying it's not a good work. It's a good work if you're af, after the right thing. But, I mean, they're going to go, they're going to, they'll dance to whatever tune you play so long as they're going to get what they want. Just the way it works. However, it's the expense of 197 individual little towns and zip codes in this county. Do you, do you know how, har, how big the harvest is? You know, I shut everything down and said, we're going to go to all 197 zip codes. <laughs> And boy, that was tough to be a mobile church, hey? Eh? And boy, well, praise God for Adam and all the team back there that's, that's being organized by him because it took a lot of work that, every, that too many people are willing to just watch him do it. Praise God for everybody on the music team. <laughs> praise God. And, 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 and for everybody that was willing to stick with us and do it. But they're still waiting. Pick a door, win a prize. Pick a zip code, win heaven. You're going to have to get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire first. And if you're not sure that you are, just go out and start knocking on the door and look at the results. Ask yourself, is it the same results that the apostles got? If it's not, then go, go, go to prayer, then go back out there. Then come back, go to prayer, then go back out there. Then come back, go to prayer, because you're looking for one. And you may have to go through 101 to find one. You may have to, might even have to go through 500 to find one. But, but the one ultimately is a door to a breakthrough. I said it's a door to a breakthrough. I said it's a door to a breakthrough. You're going to have to get out of you. You have to get out of your demeanor. If you're still basically socially challenged, are you hearing me? You don't have to get yourself a breakthrough. You've got fear problem. You're in bondage. You got you socially challenged, huh? That's a disease. You got yourself, you got yourself a dysfunctional disease. God wants to heal you tonight. He wants to get rid of that mess. Intellectualism will open up the door to being socially challenged. It's true. You can see it's reproduced. I believe it's a demon spirit. I do not believe it's just something that the way you're wired. I don't believe that for a moment. I don't believe that anybody is created to be anything different than what God Almighty is. That he created us and formed us in his image and his likeness to be just like him. And if anything messes with that, it's called demons. Period. It's called messed up. It's called diseased at best. God wants to heal you, fill you, overwhelm you. And it's just a voluntary willingness to say, okay, Lord, I'm coming to you. Amen. I'm coming to you. I'm going to participate with you. <laughs> I'm going to let you take over. Amen. I'm being will. I want to be a fool for your sake. Huh? <laughs> Are you with me? And you won't have to be. He'll fill you with his majesty. <laughs> you know what another beautiful thing is happens when you let God fill you with his love for people? You don't have lust for people anymore. When you let God, I'm going to say it again. When you let God fill you with the love for, his love for people, you don't have lust for people anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> It works every beautiful way you can think of. Close to get it ain't not touched. I, I'm, I'm trying to get done. I'm trying to get done. I'm just going to challenge you for change. I'm, I'm going to challenge you to, to I want to, I demand to see Jesus Christ. I want to see Jesus. I want to see his love. I want to see his compassion. I want to see his reward in your life. I'm not settling for anything else. I don't care if you could quote the whole of the Bible to me. I want to see Jesus. I'm not interested in you quoting it. Let me see Jesus. Amen. I'm not interested in an intellectual Jesus. I'm interested in a living Jesus. Oh, come on, people. I'm not interested in your ideas about his love. I want to see and feel his love. 
<laughs> I want to see the demonstration of that power, which is the greatest power ever displayed to man, the very love of God. Out of it flows all the riches of heaven. Oh, my estate rebekeste. Oh, God. Mamandeste. Malandeste kete pratashte. Malambadekadeste pratashte. Who is the Holy Spirit to us? The Holy Spirit to us is our parakalaitos. He's our leader, our mentor, our guide. He's, a, he's a, as, as, just as Jesus was to the disciples and, and something more. He shows us everything that Jesus is doing and all that he possesses. And he makes it a living reality. It's my life. That's the beauty of it. He shows me all that he's doing and all that he possesses. And he makes it a living reality in my life right now. Oh. Every single day that I obey him. If I close up shop and sit around in the living room and drink coffee all day, I, I'm not really going to have, or whatever it is that you do. I don't drink coffee. Just make sure that everybody understands. Whatever it is that you do, I know some folks who do drink coffee all day. There's not going to be that manifest glory of his presence. It's not going to be there. If I'm busy doing my own thing, I can know whether it's my own thing or if it's a heaven thing or if it's a kingdom of God thing. Because if it's a heaven thing and a kingdom of God thing, he's not only showing me what he's doing and giving to me all that he possesses and manifesting it through me, huh? that's the break point. He's showing it to me. He's revealing it. He's causing me to know that it's mine. I'm possessing it. He's doing it through me. I know I'm right there on time with him. Hallelujah. Okuru stavradaf. Don't tell me it can't be done. A dear close friend of mine who's now gone on to be with the Lord, he built a $30 million business, and he would not allow him in, in interacting with all of his customers. He always said, first and foremost, before we talk about business, I want to talk about your soul. I want to talk about Jesus for just a moment. People standing there from Standard Oil, billionaires standing in front of them all suited up ready to have the meeting with their suitcases, briefcases and whatnot. And he says, so glad that you're here and looking forward to what this conversation will bring. But before we do anything, I need to talk to you about your soul. And he would lay it out there by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, the spirit of the world says, no way, man. The spirit of the world says, you can't do that. You will fail. You'll be the laughing stock. Okay, fine. But that's what we're called to do. We're called to go and seek and save those that are lost. Could we do anything else here? What's your name? Somebody says, see anybody, what's your name? Listen, I'm going to get to that, but I want to tell you about the name above all names first, Jesus. And if you say it and, you're sa and it's saturated with prayer, that's saturated with the prayer life. It's going to strike them. I sat one night with a woman, a neurologist, PhD, MD from China, on a, was it five or six hour flight? Was it a six hour flight? She was captivated every second. Every second. I mean, come on, people. There's a lot of hungry folks out there. We're getting ready to land in, in LaGuardia Airport. And she was right there at that point of surrendering her life over to Jesus. Communism just holding her. She's there on assignment to do the things that she's doing with her company from China that they were doing with another company just outside of I guess it's Pennsylvania, at University of Pennsylvania. People, honestly, Satan's going to, if you're listening to and having to be completely inundated all, with all the things that people think, and you're cooperating with that, you know, so you have to participate. You think you have to participate with this because you're there working for them. You're there functioning within the framework of, you know, their various creeds and their various, you know, disciplines whatever you're in. 
I'll just say from banking to medical, si clinical science, watch out. Because that's, that, that's, that's a place of a lot of voices that are contrary to God. Going to be telling you what you can do and what you can't do. You have to have a resolve already of who you are and what you're going to do. And you have to understand this, this companionship. Bebe, you, you may not recognize it, but Holy Ghost is right there with you. Holy Spirit's right there with you. And, and, and it is going to follow us around all day and we're doing nothing? Maybe at that point we could t talk about angels on assignment in our lives, bringing to us the things, administering the things of the Holy Spirit. But what are they doing? Trailing you around while you basically do nothing? Huh? They, sit, they got all this, you know, they, they're ready to say, Holy Ghost, we need you over here. Jason's about ready to bring it. That's going to break open the whole of San Diego. He, I see him moving in it right now. He's not letting up. Every devil of hell is already running. I see him already running. The power of God is just already on display. Come, empower him some more. I don't know how it works. I'm just giving you just kind of a snapshot of how it might be working. I just know that he brings the glory. I just know that he's hooked us up with the flow of heaven to supply to us enough to change this whole region. I know there's 197 zip codes. Which one have you took, taken up? Which one are you on assignment to? Think about it. And all of a sudden, you take and you, you decide. You plan to go in, in that one of these zip codes and you plan a flag. Maybe you're not comfortable in your own home zip code. Maybe a prophet is without honor in his own home zip code. <laughs> or you feel intimidated <laughs> in your own neighborhood or your own home zip code. Go to the other side of the county to a zip code who's never seen you nor knows you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You take a Reinhardt Bonnke. You take Brit. Uh, Phil, I just give you a list of folks. They walk into a zip code and not a single person in there knows them. They have no, you know, facial recognition there, no fame to go before them. I promise you, they're going to have some results inside of a month. They're going to have some results inside of a month. Because I know these guys. I know what they're going to do. They're going to knock on every single door. And when that door opens, they've got something that they're going to bring and they're going to deliver. And it's not a package of self. It's not a package of human knowledge and human information. It's a package that they receive from heaven. It's a Holy Ghost fire. It's a Holy Ghost shower. It's a Duca Bastele, Holy Ghost Tapara, they blessing. It's a, it's a genuine care. Do you know that people have a detector as to whether or not you're the real deal or not? Of whether this is fake? I've watched people over and over again, especially with Ann, we go places, places, she really is genuinely happy. This is not a show. They're always surprised. Why? Because they're having this, like, this facade being put up all the time. And then now you see somebody who's genuinely, this is the real deal. People are looking for the real deal to show forth from your life. <laughs> and God the Holy Ghost is the real deal. <laughs> and he wants to open up the floodgates in your heart. He'll open up the floodgates in your heart. He'll open up the floodgates in your life. I promise you, he'll open up the floodgates through your life. I promise you, you won't be an old you still barren. Uh, oh, why are you looking like an EWEU? <laughs> we want to heal you tonight. If you're barren, we want you to be able to bear many children. Amen. We want you to be fruitful. God's purpose is that you not be barren and unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you let God form his heart within you by his spirit in every way being conformed to the image of Jesus. And I know that what happens, so many people immediately they see themselves seated at the right hand of the majesty on the <laughs> And that's beautiful. But I'm going to tell you right now, there is a cross, there's persecution and suffering and going out to the one because you've given yourself over to this passion of God who so loves the world.
who so loves the lost and, and hurting and dying and suffering. If there's any reason for people to dive into the altar and start crying out to God, it's for the lack of compassion in our life. It's for our willingness to be so caught up within the culture of our society, of our social structures, at the expense of putting his kingdom first. Love for him is demonstrated by love for everybody around us. Love for him is demonstrated, service to him is demonstrated by us laying down our life. He said, you cannot be my disciple, you can't learn from me. And really he's saying, you can't receive from me, you can't be empowered by me unless you are willing to forsake everything, Amen. to forsake your life. He that loses his life for my namesake shall find it, the Jesus message. We want to have what only he can give and still hold on to our own lives. It won't work that way. He said, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross and come and imitate me. Well, Jesus, what did you do? I want to seek and save that which is lost. And praise God, you know, you get to grow and you get to develop in the church. Amen. Because it's part of the family. It's part of the household. He was developed, grew for 30 years, right, in the family. Jesus didn't just send the disciples out until about two years into his ministry. He didn't send them out right away. He just kept them with him, developing them, training them. And then he sent them out two by two, empowered to go. And we just want to grab a hold of that. He's, it's here to, he, it's, he, he's here tonight. He's with this, to, with this supply here tonight. If you make excuses for yourself, you can't have it. If you're trying to think it through, you'll never figure it out. <laughs> it's a place of abandonment and surrender. Especially when I'm going all the way with you. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to slow up in obedience to you. I'm, I've counted the cost already. I know what the cost is. The cost is that people are going to maybe persecute me. They're going to say, they're going to reject me. They're going to say bad things about me, maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? Might as well believe for the best. Of course, he said if they called me, if they said that I was did these works by Beelzebub, what are they going to talk about? What are they going to say about you? That's usually the religious department. So okay, it's not the lost. Let's see it. Let's see a move of God. Let's just step into this overwhelming, <laughs> glorious beauty of heaven that I want to define for you. As his love. It's not some goosebumps running up down your head, back and neck. You know, some kind of like dizzy feeling where you feel real weighty. Okay, that's good and everything, whatever. But it's his overwhelming, beautiful love. It's his overwhelming, beautiful joy. It's his overwhelming, beautiful peace. And you lose all sense of sensibility. And you lose all sense of self-consciousness. And in that way, it's kind of like getting drunk. <laughs> Ann and I were having, trying to have a conversation with a person the other day. It was right at the only place we could have a meeting room was right next to the bar. They were so loud. Everybody gets real loud. I guess it's because they're, you know, their hearing gets impaired. And they're laughing. <laughs> Just acting like a bunch of idiots. Father has a place for us that's beautiful and glorious in this, if you want to call it drunk. But it's not really drunk. It's overwhelmed by his presence. It's free <laughs> of all self-consciousness, of all trying to act like somebody that you're not, trying to be all whatever. Father's invited us to come be what he is. All you that are weary, I see you weary, see you laboring, heavy laden with all your stuff. He said, come over here. I'll give you rest. I'll cause you to rise up. <laughs> Stand with me, will you? I just, uh, I haven't even gotten my first verse of scripture yet. Well, no, maybe kind of did. Kind of did. You know, when you come to the, when God in the, in the meetings, I mean, my whole life, 
all of those that are around me, all the mentors that I've had, they said, listen, the whole meeting's about the altar call. Talk about the altar call. Listen, if you can't receive from me, you've got to go find somebody else. But I promise you, if you can't receive from me, you can't receive from anybody else either. You'll like them for about two months or one year until all of a sudden they get up in your face and start messing with your stuff. Then your favorite demons are going to get upset in you again. So let's get rid of it tonight. Because I promise you, I've, I've told people, I've watched people's reaction to the anointing presence before. I said, it ain't going to work out good for you. I see the end. I've, I've told people, because I've, 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 I've seen the end of so many people's lives and reactions to the Lord. It's everything from being unfruitful to dying. Who wants to live that life? Why do you want to be on the fence? I know the truth hurts sometimes. And when we start getting right in your space, and all of a sudden we touch something, that your, your thoughts open up to every critical thing and every slanderous thing. I promise you that's demon power, people. That isn't Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost don't do that. Holy Ghost don't do that. If it's not the Holy Spirit, it's demon spirits because there's no place for just you. You just got to understand this. I know maybe for some people it's hard to understand. It's Holy Ghost, it's Holy Spirit, or it's demon spirits. Holy Spirit is bringing forth the atmosphere of the sun in our life, around us and in us. Where we're crying out, Father, you're my dad, I'm doing everything you want me to do. If there's ever a place for an altar call in your life for you to build an altar, it's right here. If you're not certain about your salvation, if you're not certain that you are a new creation, if you're not certain, then that's the first altar call. That's the first altar. To where you say, wait a minute, I'm coming to Jesus. I'm, and when you come to Jesus, I want you to understand something. You're not coming to something that fits in your life. You're coming to a cross where you die. You're, you're over and don't get mad at the preacher who's telling you, look, you're living your life and you said you were dead. So you're lying. You're not real. So don't get mad at the preacher just because you're not doing it. Are you with me? When you come to Jesus Christ, you came to him and you were willing to lose your life. It's a crucifixion. He did it for you and me. And oh, my goodness, if he loved us so much, how, much, how wonderful it is to love him back. And we love him back through obedience. If you're not certain tonight that you've been crucified with Christ, that you no longer live, get certain. Because you can't even begin until your certainty is there. I've watched people go with a doctrine of a dual nature. That, you know, both Holy Ghost is on the inside of me and a, and a fallen nature is there too. And change the world because they said no to sin, obedience to God, I'm going to bring the gospel to the lost. It isn't really about having, you know, everything right. You just need to have boldness and confidence. You, just know, you need to know the message. You've got to be willing to go. You've got to be willing to say, I'm done. <laughs> I'm already in heaven. You're, you're going to be in heaven pretty quick here, people. Whether you live out a full life or not, you're going to be out of here pretty quickly. And the more you delay, and if Satan can play the game of delay on you, he will play it to your last breath. You better hear me. You better listen to me. When my kids didn't obey me, I said, you, listen, you obey me right now. And I'll tell you right now, I want to give you a memo. I'm dad in the house. Whether you like me or not, I'm dad in the house. And you have to listen to me. It's true. And you can be a rebellious child if you want. It ain't going to work out good for you. It ain't going to work out. You can be Mr. Independent, I know, whatever. It ain't going to work out. Because I'm not presenting me. I'm presenting him. And this is not my house. It's his house. And I'm standing in his stead. And God wants you also standing in his stead as well. This is, this is what he's called. If there's any place of an altar call, when you know that you're born again, when you know that you're right with God, when you know that you no longer live, that you come into this place of union with Christ Jesus. Well, what a, what a privilege.
the altar then is the altar of surrender. If it's not there, if surrender, if obedience isn't there, then you say, okay, I'm coming to you, Jesus. I'm coming to you, Jesus. Let me, tell you, let me tell you the trick that the enemy's done a really good job playing. There's places that I could take you right now that I know crazy iniquity is going on in the leader's life, in the leaders of the church, in their life. Crazy iniquity. There's sin is rampant throughout the massive congregation. And there's more than one place that I could take you. But they are all so passionate. They're all so enthusiastic. They're all so intense about it all. Because they bought into a lie, number one, that they can live in the sin, live in whatever they want to, and they're going to be right with God. And so they make a party out of the meeting. They make a party out of the meeting, and then they go party. But it is such a display of passion and emotion that it looks real. Well, you and I sitting around here, Kind of looking, you know, down in the mouth. Maybe. That don't look real now. Compare the two. One looks real. One looks like where you want to be. One looks like happy land. One looks like heaven. The other one looks like almost hell. It looks like a bunch of depressed people. So if I'm going to make up my mind, where am I going to go to the church? I'm going to go over there with all those happy people, all those party people. They're not really happy. They just know how to, they know how to kick it up. And, of course... I've discovered over and again, when the enemy can use you, he ain't going to fight you. Should I say that again? When the enemy can use you, he's not going to fight you. The Mormons don't have half the spiritual battle. They don't have any really spiritual battle. What a promotion they've had. They live out the Christian dream. They, <laughs> they lend and do not borrow. Their expansion, their, their expansion of wealth is crazy. Roman Catholic Church, I go on and on. You and I are going to have to get real about what we're real, what, what, what we have. So I'm going to have to happen. So there's going to have to be a breakthrough. Someone's going to have to step up and say, wait a minute, God's worthy of more than what I'm giving him. He's worthy of a greater expression of thanksgiving, a greater expression of joy, a greater expression of love, a greater expression of servitude, a greater expression of obedience, of cooperation, of, uh, of following, a, a greater exp expression of of all that he is and his love, his joy, everything that you read about, he's worthy of it all. When you say he's worthy of it all and let it go so deep that you really begin to give it all. There's an altar here. It's an altar of, okay, Holy Spirit, I present myself to you, a living sacrifice. That's my will in total Abandonment, his will. Let your fire fall on me. <laughs> and I promise you people, it won't take a long time. Once you get a breakthrough, once you're no longer having to de de deal with the demonic harassing spirits, demon spirits, once you get a breakthrough, you'll be able to just lift your hands. I don't care where you're at. Glory, come. Don't hold anything back. 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 Don't hold it. Father, I thank you for the special anointing that you placed upon Annalyn. That as she prepares to go to Japan, the Lord, you make her heart so big for Japan. And yet, so dependent upon you. Recognize you, she can't do anything without you. That when she speaks... It sounds like it's just, it's just dripping with conversation with God. That when she just carries on a basic conversation, there's a, there's a, there's a sense of, of an interaction with you, of a, of a radical prayer that's being prayed. Jesus. 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 You know, everybody around you wants to... To fit in, act like them. They all can kind of go sort themselves out in the crowd, basically, people they can relate to. God doesn't want that in your life. He wants you to belong to a realm called the kingdom. 
and stand all alone if need be. But you won't be long for long when the love of God is manifested and heaven is being brought. People gather around you because there's hurting people everywhere. The only way they're trying to deal with their hurt and their pain is to try to get to you right over there in company with them so they can use your friendship to try to put a little stuffing in the hole. Jesus is here. The Holy Spirit wants to co-partner with you. Co-witness with you. You're witnessing, but he's co-witnessing. You're obeying, but in that partnership, he's right there co-partnering with you where you're not going to go anywhere on, on his behalf and him not going to be right there with you. 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 When as I was a child, I spake like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And I recognized the responsibility that I had. And this particular responsibility is to represent His Majesty. Not on my terms, on His. Not by my ability, but by His. You flood my soul. Come flood my soul with the moving of your spirit. The Lord is going to raise up in this place witnesses unto himself and unto his resurrection. People, that is a strong and profound statement. There's nothing that religion can do in that. Witnesses unto himself, that's full of him. Witnesses unto his resurrection, no greater power. No greater power. Ha! Masheto Koneshti. Oh, God! As they said in the days of old, come bend me, Lord. Come bend me. Bend me to your will. Bid me to your ways, oh God. Let there be nothing in my life to resist you. Listen, there is a place of brokenness before him. There is a place that as you yield him, it goes so much deeper. So much deeper to where he comes and fills you and overwhelms you. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm uh, overwhelmed with his presence. To where there's nothing about our life at that moment that looks anything like what we are in the natural. You know, and, and I understand this so well. It's why so many people have made up various different explanations for it because there's these moments that it's like wait a minute this is different from all the rest of my life what is this what so then they start trying to think about various different attributes of nature no it's a it's a place of field isn't it? that we first touch and then we learn to live in it we learn to live in it and it's so beautiful because it's not, it has nothing to do with our personalities. Nothing to do with our personalities. You can have an outgoing personality. But when God takes hold of you, the way he wants to take hold of you, it's his personality. It's the personality of the Holy Ghost. Oh, his love, his joy. His peace, His compassion, His goodness. So that 
you have an outgoing person and you have a person that's socially challenged. But you to both, you to the Holy Ghost, they look exactly the same. His, they look like Him. They feel like Him. There's no awkwardness there. There's no, you know, when you walk up to someone, you can't help it because we're spiritual beings. You will either communicate to them who you are and your stuff as they communicate to you who they are and their stuff or you communicate the Spirit of the Lord to them, Jesus stuff, Holy Ghost stuff. It's, but either way, it's happening. Lord, I ask you to take a hold of Abraham's life. Let your fire fall upon him. Let the truth of your word truth of your word be in him. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that in Jesus' name everything unlike you leaves and everything about you remains, stays, and grows and develops. There is an altar. There's an altar here tonight where you begin to say, Lord, I, I'm going to start from this day forward and I'm going to present myself to you, living sacrifice, to obey. The living sacrifice, fire comes on it not to burn up and like the, the sheep and the goats of old but to be so filled up and so consumed with who he is that everywhere we go, we represent him. There's an altar here that says, I'm going to stop representing me. I'm going to start representing him. I'm going to start living my life. I'm going to start living his life. I'm going to come to understand how to gather around what he's doing. Come on, brother. If I see a Holy Ghost fire, I'm going to jump on it like a log and be a part of the burn. Amen. In Mongolesto. Ha ha ha. Krasta. Throw this log on the fire. Woo. Karababa serebebe kerebatushte. Jesus is sorrow. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. To take a hold of our lives and begin to cause us to be the fruitful people. That he ordained us to be from the very beginning not to sit around and wait for the move of God but to again begin to press into it we're coming into the year 2024 and if there's ever a rhyme with four it's got to be more and it's got to be more obedience that produces more of his manifest glory more of the giftings more of the display of who he is Jesus. Father, thank you for your life and for your glory. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that brings to us all that you are, all heaven's presence. And fills us up with you. Lord, that we may shine with the brightness of who you are to the world around us and even in a more wonderful way than that, to enjoy this union with you, this oneness with you, that you paid, paid such a high price for us to have. Oh, caro, oh, caro stene. Lord, no more of me, no more of a little of me and a lot of you. No more of some of me and some of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you teach me now. <laughs> I totally yield myself to you. Karas Adamre. Lang Jesus. Jesus. Look, it's his plan. It's not hard. It's his plan. You want to learn how to yield. Rababasteti. Zista Rababakist. Jesus. Jesus. Zorra, ba, 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 si, ba, 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 ba,
people, I want you to understand, there's not a human mind or a human spirit that can work anything out, figure anything out, solve any problem. It doesn't exist. There are only temporary solutions. God the Holy Ghost is the means by which every problem is solved. Everything is healed. Everything is changed. Jesus name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every mind blinding spirit, every power of darkness that would try to hide the reality of who you are, Jesus, of what you've done, of the working of your mighty power. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask you, break off every yoke, send it away. Let the reality of eternity fill hoit so before it's forever too late. Ramande and Rastande. Oh, Kiddish. Jesus. Ratas. Let us start it. Vangaleo to. Vangaleo si prata. Mama nang re mamaina. Oh, it might be a sacrifice. Oh, but you know what's going to happen? It might be scary. It might be frightening. Oh, but you know what's going to happen? You're going to come back rejoicing saying, Hey! The devils are subject to us to your name. I can't believe the power that started surging through my life. I can't believe the change that come to that one who was crippled, that one who was blind, that one who was tormented. Oh, God, I'll do this for the rest of my life. It don't matter what price I have to pay. I promise you it's worth it all. It's worth it all. Don't let Satan lie to you. Don't let him hold you back. Don't let him tell you all a bunch of a bunch of lies, a bunch of stories about yourself. It's about time that you believe God and start yielding to him. Hallelujah. You start falling out under the Holy Ghost in your living room. Malananda stay. Uh, then, then anybody who's a servant of God, they get five feet from you, you'll fall out. Why? Because you just become more sensitive to his presence that's already here. The more sensitive you are to his presence, the more you receive from him, period. The people who knew that, it was, that he was the Messiah, the Son of God, they received. They received. Those who were uncertain, they didn't receive. Those who were unaware of who was there could not receive anything from God. Oh, become ever more aware of his glory that accompanies you. God is not a liar. He's co-partner with you, co-inheritor with you, co-witness with you. His assignment to us is I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Behold, lo, I'm with you even unto the end of the world. And he went everywhere with them, confirming his word. Satarast, satarast, satarast. His word. With signs and wonders, the ones that he only he could do. But he did it through them. The only way that the invisible Jesus was seen was their obedience. The only way the invisible Jesus was seen was what they were willing to let the invisible Jesus do. Through them. Through their hands. It was really his hands. Through their mouth. It was really his mouth. Holy Ghost, let your fire so consume every part of me. There's nothing but your expressions in me. Nothing but your love, your joy, your glory, your power, your presence through me. That's the altar, people. It's not an altar for constantly coming, saying, I'm a sinner. i got to get rid of this sin. i got to get rid of that sin. This thing, that thing. It's the altar of surrender to his life. <laughs> It's faith works, not law works, not human works, not works at all. Just his life. It's his life. When the spirit goes out of a 
person, they dead, their body is dead, only waiting for the resurrection. When his spirit comes into us, the whole fool of our expression becomes oh, who he is, what he's doing. That's all you got to say. Oh, God, not my spirit, not my will, your spirit. Because God not only gave us a new spirit, he put his spirit on the inside of us to be in oneness with our spirit. As we cooperate with him, as we move with him, as we're led by him, as we're mentored by him, as we say yes to him, as we look at him, we look at his love, we imitate that love because we feel with that love when we see that love. Oh, I've seen so many people roll on the floor laughing and get up and just have just as much lack of a demonstration of love as they had before. Real joy brings real love. Real love brings real joy. It's all a package. And then it's just that abandonment of Jesus who's so captivated with a love for the lost, a love for Father. Can I, can I show you Jesus' will for just a minute? Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass through me. It wasn't talking about the cross. He was in the throes of a spiritual warfare that was causing such strain, such intensity, such labor that his sweat turned blood. I mean, some of us have sweated a lot in hard work, but we've never sweated so much with such stress, intensity, and agony that our, blood, our sweat became blood. Capillaries bursting. It's intense. His will, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But not my will. Can you hear it? He had a will. He, his will expressed himself. Your will expressed yourself. My will expressed myself. Sometimes it's intense. We say, Father. They say, Father, I don't want to. I don't want to do this. It's just too. T it's just too difficult right now. To get on another airplane or to go there or to go to my neighbor or whatever it is. But not my will, Father. Yours will. Yours. Can I start all over with you tonight? Can I start all over with you tonight, but just in a greater dimension of receiving your grace, a dim greater dimension of surrender to your will, a greater dimension of God of receiving that which only you can give. And he'll say, yeah. He'll say, yes. You just, you have to, you, have, you talk. You say something. You learn to cry out. You learn to lift up your voice. You learn to have your, the altar in your life. You learn to have the meeting place. Listen to me. I hope you can understand this. I will never do anything on behalf of the Lord because he's never called me to do anything on his behalf. I will always do everything with him because he's called me to do it with him. And there's a, a world of difference there. World of difference there. I'll never do anything on his behalf. I'll never do it out of a reason to gain something for myself or win something for myself because my reward is his presence my he's my reward he that's what he wants you're not going to do anything on his behalf you do it with him because that's the only way it works it's co-inheritor co-partners co-witness co-laborers together with christ Lord, let it sink so deep by your spirit. Let it sink so deep. Let it sink so deep, O oh Lord, that it comes like wails. The wailings of a heart. Let it sink so deep that it comes, O oh Lord, like the depths of the cries of our spirit. O oh God, let it come so deep that nothing else can exist within our lives but this one thing. This one thing, Lord Jesus. 
changed it. This is the altar. This is the altar of conversation. This is the altar of commitment. This is the altar of crying out and strong crying. This is the altar of thanksgiving. This is the altar of rejoicing. This is the altar of holy union. God doing it with us. We doing it by Him and in Him. With Him with us and upon us. Flowing out of the depths of our soul. Out of the depths of our life. I'm going to underscore one last thing for you. You can only have so deep of a relationship with God. This may sound strange to some of you. You can only have so deep of a relationship with the Holy Spirit when it's just you and Him. It's not until you begin to go on His behalf to the others that suddenly you begin to discover that place of growth and maturation and fathomless depths and it heights that have no end. It's when all of a sudden you go on his behalf to the hurting, to the dying, to the lost, to the needy, to those who need to be touched, trained up. You got to recognize. You got to recognize. Jesus said it. Paul said it. Peter said it. It can't be us taking to them what we know intellectually. It's taking to them what he has given to us in his power. And the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, nothing, nothing bigger than his love. Nothing. His love, the manifestation of his love is bigger than raising the dead. And out of his love, out of that manifestation of his love, the dead are raised. Nothing's bigger. Nothing's bigger. Nothing's more important to the moving of the Holy Spirit than you and I being together in one mind in this place of union with one another. This place of union with one another because we're in union with Him, obviously. We're in union with His Word. Go wait, Terry, in Jerusalem until you receive power from one heart. They're all gathered together in one place, having all things in a perfect agreement, one accord. Ah. Then there came sound from heaven. Then the move of God began. Then the hardest place on earth was hit with the fire of his presence. 3,000 the first day. Then within just a couple of days, 5,000 more. That's 8,000 and growing every day. And as many as the Lord our God should call. And he's calling whosoever will. Now let's reach in. Let's grab the whole this. Let this church come to 400 people. Then let's just start another one in another location. Go to get a zip code. Start seeing people gathered together. Then just, just go ahead. We'll just, you pastor that church. And we'll make sure that you have all the stuff. Ain't no, way, no reason we'll wait around. The assignments have already been given out. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. You don't have to go to Mexico. You don't have to go to Japan. You don't have to go to Kashmir. You can go to 97023, whatever it is. It's, 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 these are the nine ones here, right? I get nine twos and nine ones. Pick a zip code. Pick a zip code. Get a map out. Pray over it. Cry out, oh God, anoint me. Anoint me. For this zip code. Give me a special anointing with this zip code. You, if you have never gone into each zip code, use the elementary school as the center of the zip code, in all the 197 zip codes of this county, you're missing out on something. There are so many little micro worlds. You, when you want a moment, you in China. The next moment, you in India. The next moment, you in Mexico. Yeah. Then you in something else. <laughs> it, just, it just goes on and on and on. And there's all these little cultures. And they're all in desperate need of Jesus. And the fields are white. Drive, drive, drive around, pray in the Holy Ghost. Drive around, pray in the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, the pool leads you right to that spot.
Then just start walking around, praying, looking around. Don't be long, you'll find somebody to talk to. You can start declaring to them the word of the Lord. They say, it won't be, you should, within the first couple of seconds, you say, yeah, the Lord Jesus Christ sent me here. God's going to move in this place. There's hurting, dying, suffering people here. Things are going to change, beginning with you. Because God's got his eyes on you. I didn't just happen to be running to you by, by chance. So you got to get bold about this. you got to get sure about this, certain about this. Recognize God with you and God's in you. Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Sing <laughs> Hallelujah. Because it takes boldness, people. Faith, demand, faith has to have boldness. And when we just stand up and say, agree with God and kick all the other things out of our mind, we ain't going to have nothing but boldness. So I just want to challenge you. We have a meeting in the morning at, uh, whew, it's hard to let you go. Because I just know God, just, he'll take you somewhere deeper take you somewhere deeper than you've ever been before. Tomorrow morning we're going to get together and we're going to do the same thing at 11 o'clock in the morning. We're not going to do a religious thing. We're going to do a seek God thing. We're going to, sit, we're going to, we're going to turn you into a flames of fire thing. Yes. No holding back, nothing earthly, nothing mixture, none left. But His will. And then we'll do it again at 4 o'clock. And I pray that you'll go home and you'll build an altar. As it were, a place where you go seek Him. Where you go cry out. Where you let the fire of his presence fall on you. Where you let him direct you, show you. Listen. Praying. Ministering in the word to one another at the house. Worshiping. And then going. Just to build. It's a build to go. Well, I've got to go to work. Well, you're going to work for the purpose of the kingdom. Otherwise, get rid of your work. Let us just send you out. You won't starve. I'm going, and I'm going for the purpose. I'm looking. I'm looking. We're seeking. So many people have been introduced to so much religion. Sometimes you just got to love them for a while, you know. They just got to see that there's a real genuine love going on in here. And then there comes a time where you got to speak. You just, you just sense it as the Lord. Sometimes it's the first thing you see them. It's just, it's right there. The low hanging fruit. <laughs> Pick it before it drops. Amen. we're going to do is we'll start singing the song inside this place I'll be a living sacrifice and it's going to ring out with the shouts of heaven and it's going to have a going to have a sound to it just like the sound that brought down the walls of Jericho there's a supernatural sound true it's beautiful and when it's when it's every one of us in agreement with this thing we're saying Lord I'm all in and he knows we're all in Holy Ghost comes and he brings truth where truth can be found. Where truth will be received. He brings truth. He's not going to mix up with no liar or false. You know, expressions or hard hearted or half heartedness. He's coming with the truth. With the truth. Father, I thank you for your rich blessing upon the people here at the abiding place. I thank you, Father God, for the great multiplication. Holy Father, for the great multiplication. Heavenly Father, Father, my Father and my God, for the great multiplication. That there'll be churches, Holy Ghost churches, in 197 zip codes. There'll be Holy Ghost churches for real. With your holiness, with your presence, with all the things that bring life and liberty to a dead and dying world. Oh, thank you, Father. 
it won't be a famine anymore in this region, in this county. But all of a sudden, out of churches being planted everywhere, suddenly the fire of His presence began to fall upon every dwelling. You know, a guy who, I know nothing about sales, but a guy who knows about sales, he said, I found, and he's, and he's good at reaching the lost. He's good. He's a soul. He knows how to win souls. He says to me, he said, all I want to do is I want to show them the product. I want to introduce them to the product. I don't care whether they buy or not. I just want to introduce them. They've never seen it before. Hey, I will show you Jesus. Some people want to buy it all right off the bat because it's consumer mentality. I'm going to show you Jesus. Next thing he wants to do is he wants to come back at him with some kind of an association. In this particular instance, he said, well, you got, here's my product, and now there's a Coca-Cola with it. I don't know how you fit that in, but here's the product, but here's the glory of God with it, okay? Put it that way. In another dimension of his glory. Here's signs, wonders, miracles, healing for your body. And then the last thing he wants to do is I want to somehow get into their house. I want to be able to step into their house. There's so many different ways to be able to do that. If you're selling a product, you know, it's all this social media that we have. But all of a sudden, if they got your car, you can call me day or night. If you, I promise you, if you're sick or disease in your body, Christ Jesus will heal you. If there's that right look in your eye, there's a believable look, and there's a not-so-believable look. Are you with me? And a lot of it has to do with passion. You listen to me. I promise you. You all, there's some kind of a crisis coming to your life, you call me. I have a direct connection with God, and he loves you dearly, and he'll prove himself to you. You lay it down like that, watch out now. It won't be long, should we so take up a mission of, of this, that there will be the fire of God on every dwelling place in the county. Yes, Why? Because there will be the voice in the same kind of way, not in that sales fashion, but kind of like that. Because everybody got introduced to Jesus. They heard about the life. It was associated with truth and power. Something you couldn't have. A, Coca-Cola is no association in compared to God. Suddenly your product, you, you, what you're declaring, now associated truly with the living almighty God. The true one only. Come on, people. Come on, people. We're not waiting on him. He's waiting on us. Then what happens? Then you come rejoicing. Then you step into a place of receptivity and moving with God. You're not sitting around depressed, sorrowful. Depression and sorrow holding in your heart, hurt, will, call, will kill you. It will cause you to be diseased and will ultimately kill you. I don't care how sweet you are, how servant you are. You hold unforgiveness. You hold heartache. You hurt hold suffering like that and pain on the inside, it'll kill you. It'll disease you and kill you. You walk in obedience to God and go lay down your life for others and let the Spirit of the Lord flow out of you and you'll never have any of that in you. Amen. Amen. I pray right now that every one of you, before I let you go, that you'll make a commitment to God that your life will become an altar. That you'll become the altar, as it were, his, the sacrifice. You'll be able to say, Lord, are we ready? Send the fire. Send the fire now. Send the fire. There'll be a longing, a confidence, a certainty. A longing, a confidence, and a certainty when you say that. That ultimately, that's going to happen every time you pray. And I promise you, when, as the fire of God's on you, you're going to have eyes to see things that you never saw before. You're going to have words of knowledge for people, words of comfort, words of encouragement, words of calling. It'll be passionate, it'll be real, it'll be genuine. And we thank you, Father, for doing it. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do in this church, through this church, to this entire region, to this entire county. I've been here before, people. I've been here before. I was at a crisis point in my life where 
because of meetings that we were having, they pulled the rug out from underneath us of the, of the, of the great, you know, church facility that we had in Claremont. And I got up in the pulpit, and I and I, because I went all over looking for a place for us to meet, and I found nothing. In a sense, I found things, but the Lord never said, this is it. So I stood up in the pulpit, and I said, God, as far as I know, we're done. You know, and on my thoughts, Lord, you sent me to the mission field. I'm going to go start doing these other things. But by, but by Monday afternoon, we had the naval galley, 40,000 square feet. It was be, within just a several months, we, we'd start having meetings that would go on until the year 2001 with hundreds and hundreds of people and sometimes thousands of people in the meetings. Ministers from all over the world come in. And the Lord speak to me over and again. It's just the beginning of what I'm going to do. It's the beginning. Just be steadfast. There was a lot of obedience and there was a lot of discomfort in that move. It was not easy. There was a lot of agonizing that went on. Because we you know, were given two months to get out. There were 60 days of agonizing. Lord, what are we going to do? And there, were, there was at that time so much going on. There was apathy among the people. There was people leaving. More people leaving that was coming. But God says, God was just silent, saying nothing. But we already have the word of the Lord. We don't have to have another one. But that's place of just total abandonment. I'm for you. I'll go anywhere you want me to. I'll do anything you want me to. I'm not bound to anything but you, oh God. I'm bound to you. And just do that. Just do it. It won't be that hard for you. Just do it. And watch what God will do. Let's, let's just do it. Amen. Amen. See, you in, see you in the morning. Hug everybody. And hug them. Get used to hugging the people you know, then if some of you have little problems, awkward.